Okay, welcome guys, welcome. We're playing with version 1.26b of Shadow Empire. I thought we played a bit of Shadow Empire. It's, the game has been updated twice in the last uh, couple of weeks, so, um, or the last week actually. Hi Team Games, how are you going? Hi to anybody else that joins us as well. Um, so, anyway, let's just uh, get into it. I guess we'll uh, start a new game. I was trying to think, what can I play as an Easter, an Easter game? And I thought it's got to be some sort of planet. Planets are closest things to, an e to looking like an egg, I guess. Um, so it was, uh, Distant Worlds is also updated. You know, it's funny, whenever I open this up, I'm a graphic designer by trade, and I hate the, 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 um, the gap, the gap between, like, it's tight there and then loose there, and that really should be tightened up. <laughs> I better put in a bug report, get them to fix the logo. Uh, it's funny, actually, there's so many gaming logos are like that, uh, particularly from, for, for indie, indie games, the, um, the actual, um, yeah, the little sensibilities aren't quite... <laughs> quite done the same way you can sort of see through here like the a when you've got an a um up against other hard areas or even if it's up against a like a, a an o or something like this it can be quite problematic because of the the gap that you end up having in there you can see there that's quite tight anyway i won't go i won't come and go and going, going in but this is um this is too loose in through here around there hi uh cole how are you going saying howdy from texas hope everyone's having a good easter uh, anyway, well, I th yeah, as I say, I just was thinking, oh, what's an Easter, Easterish game I can play? And I really couldn't think of anything that's um, that's going to have like eggs as such in them. So um, yeah, I thought planets would be the the closest thing. Uh, let's get start a new, start a new game. So we'll um, just go that way. I'm trying to think maybe. I'm trying to think how can I make a, a shortish game of Shadow Empire because um, I don't really want this to go on and on and on. And quite often uh, when you're playing it. You don't get very far before the times run out, basically, and the you know the, the stream sort of stops. So I don't really want to play on a moon. I think I'll, I'll just play on a planet, but I might just play on on a um, on an unclassified planet at this stage. What I might do is I might start a start, start a game, and then I'll come back and uh, when they've got a few people watching, I will. Um, I'll do a uh, poll to see if there's a different type of planet that you actually want to get started on. But I do like the unclassifieds. I'll go to just a small, small to normal sized uh, unclassified planet. Uh, now we've got Haven of Calm, Severe Violence, Survival Stress. Uh, we've got Spread Out. There should be just one. I thought there was one where you could have just one enemy. Robinson Crusoe. By a flick of chance, human played regimes are only surviving majors with... Um, Nemesis selected, there'll be one AI major regime added. So we could play it that way, where we basically end up with a nemesis. Now, the trouble with a nemesis, during the long climb out of darkness, there was one AI major that ma uh, managed to get a big head start. Only select this if you're in for a challenge. So if we play Robinson Crusoe with nemesis, it means that we've only got one AI to then contend with. Um... You expect many regimes that survival stress, that, could, that becomes a bit more difficult. Okay, as a result, population was sparse. Uh, all right, I think we'll uh, I think we'll play that, and we'll play spread out as well. Let's just do it this way. Um, God, Nemesis, Nemesis can be like the game is hard anyway. The game is hard. Uh, maybe we'll turn that off. We'll just leave it spread out, so the majors will have much more chance to be further away from each other. We'll just leave it that way. And we'll just play uh, Detail Planet Generation. Um, hmm. Let's just do Quick Planet Generation. Let's just let's just get into the game. Uh, the Fog of War will go, know the map otherwise complete. Uh, number of players, one human player, city state start, two armies per zone will be okay. Could go back to one army per zone if we wanted a slower start, but the two, the two allows us to do a bit more things to protect ourselves. Militia means we have to build up, um, and then we can. We're often threatened by the environment when you play it that, that way. Now, this is also something I've got. DLC, Air Force's DLC enabled. I might. Do I want to leave Oceania? Yeah, I'll leave Oceania. You're on. Hi, Kay Shizzle. Hey, how's it going? Uh, we could go tech level three. 
and start from the very, very start or tech level four. I do, I do like the tech level four starts, but the game has been now re-optimized to work better with tech level three. So maybe we'll go back that way and see what it's like. The story modules, I just don't turn them on just because all it does is add fluff to the, uh, to the game. It doesn't really add a lot to it. Uh, development speed will just go normal. Actually, I don't mind slow. To be honest, slow development tech level three is going to be, um, it just means we're going to have a slowish time. That's, that will still be okay. Only the Supreme Command Council as a select, as selected in through there. I'm just going to play on regular. I am mean, going to allow the AI more time to think, which means it's going to have come up with a few more algorithms than what it would normally have. It doesn't really affect the game, the game time all that much. Uh, now, game variants. Now, I've got disabled epochs. Um, it doesn't really matter one way or another, to be honest. Epochs are like the ages that you get. They may maybe go for like 30 turns or something. And usually at the start of each epoch, you end up with a little goodie collection of um, of cards. So if you disable it, you get the cards. If you enable it, you get some challenges and some benefits. So I'll just leave it on. Now, this is uh, this is what, where it's got um, the logistics can be also tweaked to mid-core and easier. I, the logistics I love in the game. I actually love it. Um, so for me, it's actually just such a great mechanic, but I know that it drives people nuts, like particularly new players. So I think I'm just going to leave it on the default because I really do enjoy it the, like that played that way. Let's just go and generate a world, and if we don't like it, we'll just regenerate. We'll generate an egg, an Easter egg. <laughs> what will we get? I think, the thing I love about the random planets is you just don't know what you're going to get, except that you won't get lava. Oh, an ice world. An ice world, it makes it very, things very, very slow. Now, what we can do here is, before we go into it, we can actually then just go back in and have a look and see what we've actually got on our world. This is a, a, fro a frozen world with very limited land mass. There are, there are a couple of seas. So in this case, technically, there's going to be, um, there's going to be seas, uh, like there will be different things happening. There's only one landmass that rolls through the middle of the map. Uh, we've got active geology, big ruins in different places. It's a fun little world uh, with glaciers everywhere else. That's an interesting world. Wow, do we play that one or not? If we start off down in here, that's going to be a terrible. But everywhere else has got access to water. Now, water has been changed in the game. That's a really hard start down the bottom there. And the fact that it's got a, um, a small um, border means that's, a, that's an actual start. So these have all got bigger borders. That's an actual start there. That'd be great. Got the dock. So five flats. Hmm. Yeah, dome farms would be what it would be. This one's also on the on the edge of the glacier. That one's a long way away, but that's not a, That's just a, a minor, a minor one. Um, that's a um, that's an actual start as well. That's interesting. It's a lime mountain. Well, I don't know. It's sort of um, London is a minor. So um, we've got London back in through there. Uh, God, do we want to play an ice world? Or do we want to play something different? <clears throat> yeah, so uh, Vaint is saying with snow maps, tracked is king. Yeah, it's sort of one of these things where, um, where the game is uh, it, it's very slow. Uh, marching around in the snow like it, it the your actual forces are extremely slow if we end up out here that is going to be really hard although we start on the glacier we get the we can get water from the glacier let's say um it's just a little land mass there richter's mountain what do you reckon guys should we play this one uh, or should we generate another map It's sort of interesting. Like it's every time I generate any map, doesn't matter what I generate on, in the game. It's um, I find it so um, interesting. Like you know, like it's because it's just every single map plays so differently, and um, and uh, like that's what I love about the game. It's just um, yeah, it's such an incredible game. There's a sort of like an island 
with glaciers that and glaciers can melt depending on what happens with with everything in, in through there um, which we just regenerate another one well that's that was interesting that was uh, <laughs> zero zero row uh, C so um, yeah uh, for, um, neg the average temperature negative 33 degrees Celsius uh, very young so that's why we've got we've got uh, volcanoes in the ice um, you can save it and, re and roll more. That's true. That's true. What we'll do, we might do that one. Let's just go and start a game. Now, where are we? Chain Shire. So th this would be a good, a good start for us, actually. I'll just go and grab one of my logos and primary color. Unit color. Let's go with those, um, and I'll just pick whatever the top the top one is of the next three. So we'll just go and click on OK. So enforcement, fist, and meritocracy. There we go. Without sort of thinking about it too much. So what we can do there is um, is just as you say save this one away and we do this one is a fairly easy start for us if we did play this one uh if we just go back out from here and um yeah so we, we do have a like our, our little group is now just inside this little area uh and we we have water we're on the edge of the land um there's no foliage so that would be fairly interesting actually i'll just go and i will just go and save this Uh, you've got the last planet generated. What you can do is when you go back to the save, you can just go through and actually just go and say, okay, this is um, Ice World. <laughs> there we go. So Ice World has now been saved. We don't have to, we can sort of restart once we've done that one. So uh, anyway, let's just go and cancel that and um, quit the game. All right, start a new game. Now, sometimes it doesn't like it when you start a new game. There we go. Elliot Snow is saying, uh, cheers from Chicago. Never played this game. I love RNG starts, though. Yeah, this is incredible, this game. Um, so that was like we're playing. I just setting up a small to medium sized world, unclassified. Um, we do actually have specific of, of all of the different classes. Maybe I should just go through how these actually work. Uh, these are your stock standard starting classes with the, with the different planets. So you've got like your desert worlds, ice worlds. Uh, Lemos is sort of like a desertish world. Um, uh, so this is uh, not quite desert planets, but much, uh, but not much better either way. They have a small, some amount of uh, liquid water, but they're always void of life. Uh, then you've got your lava worlds, your Siwa class, which is essentially your earth likes. Don't know why it's so green, like so, so, such a bright green like that. Medusa class is liquid water, uh, but they've got hostile alien biology. Then you've got planetoids, which are essentially are almost moons, and then you've got moon classes down through here as well. But the unclassified just randomizes everything. Uh, your additional classes that you actually have is a hydra class, a planet with lots of liquid water, rainfall, and lots of swamps. It might be similar to a Siwa class world. Uh, good chance uh, the planet has alien life. Then you've got the Morgana class, which of, of all of the actual st sort of algorithmic starts, I do like this one the best. It, it gives you um, oases in the desert. And then we've got the new one, which has just come in, which is the Colossus class. These are monstrously large planets. So um, these are uh, this, this would be too slow for us to play as a live stream, though. Then we've got the Oceania class planets, so Gaia planets, which are uh, Earth-like planets with sizable oceans. So that's probably the closest to playing on something like Earth. Uh, Arctica, which is an ice, an ice one. This this one requires a DLCs to actually play any of these. Uh, these are um, these have got like lots and lots of little islands. Actually, that one wouldn't be bad either. So these don't really generate exactly the same when you go back to core and play unclassified. The Oceania classes you don't really sort of get much um, like you do get the bigger oceans that's the one thing you do get like it does actually allow the dlc i do like these unclassifieds because you just don't know what you're going to get whereas these you know pretty much you know what you're going to get from these when you when you choose these um yeah the hydroid class is like a, a a moon a small planetoid that happens to find itself in the goldilocks zone due to the often young age of these planetoids they, they um, might not often have and have developed well developed life 
Um, okay, so uh, might go back to core again. And uh, hi, Mike. How are you going? Saying hi, chat. Daz, I wish I could get into this game. Maybe this stream will do the trick. It's one of these games where um, it's like I know where the stumbling blocks are, um, and it's it's it, it, it's not an easy game to learn. Um, but it's but everything makes sense in it, and that's what I love about it. Like it's actually one of these things, and the logistics. I've got like a couple of little house rules I give myself with logistics, or not rules, but I give a couple of guidelines that I use. Uh, never to let the try, never try to let the logistics get to the point where it's close to the edge of it not working. Um, always have about double what you need with logistics, and then you should be okay. So I sort of keep that on. I'll, I'll, I'll go through it. My, my approach. I'll do one more unclassified, and, and if we, um, and then maybe we'll have a look at something else if we, if we want to do that way as well. I'll just keep the same settings that we had there before. Just go continue. So the last planet we generated was, um, and this one we just go through all of the, um, the build-up. This one's got uh, some ice on it. Uh, that's interesting. But this is a, um, a world with, uh, okay, this, this world we've got is has got um, bigger oceans again, massive ocean there. And then we've got like a, a grasslands with with um, and most of the populations are on the north and south areas. That's interesting. They're not really taking up where the uh, where the, the maritime trade houses have established themselves. The maritime trade houses. There's only two of them actually. That's the Aries Ocean. Actually, maybe three. If it says if it shows you one of these um, one of these locations. If it says Aries Ocean, it means that there's a maritime trade house operating from in there. Which is a mechanic I don't love in the game, to be honest. Um, anyway, that's the uh, various areas around the planet. A bit of radiation back over this other side. I don't. This one doesn't uh, grab me as much as the other one did. Like we've got a, a few like human populations out through this other side. A couple of different starts there. At least everyone started spread right out. There's another start back in through there. Let's go back out and re-roll again. <clears throat> Just got a new planet. Do one more unclassified. Yeah, case you're saying I spawned a bunch of hostile uh, aquatic aliens once and was dead in less than 10 turns. Oh, it can happen. I've, I've been killed in the first turn uh, with the robots. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is a uh, planet almost perfect in fast orbiter and a, a yellow G2 star, so like one of ours. Let's have a look and see what we've got. If you go and click on this one, this one does look like an ocean an ocean world. Uh, interesting. Again. So we've got a f everyone's very, very spread out. There's hardly any, any life on this, uh, any human life on this planet. And again, devoid of life. I think that one's um, it's too far apart. Um, so that one's not really all that good. We'll try one more. Unless you guys want to see some of the other you know, generated planets, like where you use the algorithms. Or we just do a slow, a slow start and see what we end up getting. Maybe we'll do that if this one doesn't... Uh, doesn't oh, wow, this is too big. Too, the oceans are way too big in this one. Yeah, no, this is... <laughs> that is basically unplayable. Um, there, are, <laughs> there is someone up the top there. Wow, that's not going to work. <laughs> okay, I've never seen it generate something like that before. Not this bad. This is terrible. Um, yeah, little ruins on these little islands around the place and just um, this one here in amongst the uh, radiation zones <coughs> yeah that's no good <laughs> um, jungle planet with tons of aliens is usually a lot of fun says vain it's too slow that's the the trouble with jungle worlds is it's too slow to expand uh, and um, it's yeah so that becomes a, that becomes tricky let's just go to new planet but what we'll do is we'll just we'll do an actual uh, we'll do unclassified I'm just going to continue. All I'm playing here is just spreading out, spreading out the factions. 
I'll go into detail planet generation and just I'll explain sort of what's going on with it and uh, that way we'll try to get something that we that would be fun to play but jungle worlds are um, are too slow um, <clears throat> what else can you use uh, oceans for in this game well basically they they're a block and you need to it, it, the, the DLC to be honest the actual um, the Oceania DLC is not I don't like it um, to be honest it, for the simple reason that I, I wish I had navy so that I could control because you have to then you have to go in with the um, these maritime trade houses they they're sort of like the kings of the ocean and you have to actually buy shares with them you have to uh, manipulate them in certain ways you have to trade with them and then they will then transport you around in the oceans so I don't mind them if they're a, a side feature but I don't like them being a central feature not until we get oceans Oceans, uh, sorry, not oceans, not until we get navies. Navies will come at some point. I can turn it off, uh, which is what I often do, to be honest, because, um, but I'll just see what happens. If we end up with too much ocean, we can then just, um, we can then just go from there. Let's just go continue. So with the detailed planet generation, every single little thing that happens in this game has a, has a, uh, a purpose. So when you see like the gravity, the temperature, the solar irradiance, uh, planetary age, the map size, all these sorts of things, heavy elements. Uh, these all have a big bearing on what actually happens with your game, like, like everything. And so um, so depending on what actually, what you roll, um, you're going to have lots of, like all sorts of different problems will come with what you have. And so in this particular planet, one thing I would suggest if you are new to the game, don't allow, don't if you're going to do a detailed planet generation, don't accept anything with, with heavy elements less than about 100% if you can help it because that means that you're not going to find minerals and minerals are going to be very, very rare on this particular planet. But even the things like the spin, like the uh, the amount of spin will then dictate the amount of wind, the amount of wind, or if it's if the spin, so, if the spin um, 23 hours it means it's not going to be, not spinning very much. <clears throat> but in this instance, um, with, with such a high tilt, 40 degrees, uh, there's going to, the, 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 between summer and winter on this planet is going to be very, very um, pronounced. It's going to be, it's, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of um, changes uh, through, the, uh, through the temperatures uh, between summer and winter. <clears throat> that negative eight, we're going to end up with thaws and, and, and other things happening as well. So, but this, is what, this for me would be to do a re-roll. 77, still not good enough. Let's just do it until we get to about, a, there's 138. Now this one here is only point, is 0.4 G, so about half, nearly half what we have. The temperature is, uh, the average temperature is zero, but that does mean that there will be higher temperatures around the equator. Uh, so there, there, it, there will be thaw through the middle, but then there'll be frozen pole caps and they'll be fairly high. For, to put that into perspective, it, the Earth is uh, the average temperature on Earth is 15. So this is going to be have have very very high pol uh, polar caps, a tilt of 23 degrees. Now the next thing we have a look down through here, solar irradiance is is good at 1,200. That just means that solar energy is going to be viable. The planetary age is two billion years old. Um, now that actually means that there's a good chance life will form on this planet. So that that's um, that's a very very old uh it's reasonably old um like we're 4.5 there's a chance at 2 billion that we're going to end up having life sometimes you'll find planets that are like 0.2 billion years old they're too young to actually um to have life in fact they're even too young to really have an atmosphere but this one will have an atmosphere or should have an atmosphere um that's just the, the actual overall map size the spin 22 hours is actually pretty cool uh we're about half an astronomical unit away from our sun, which is a KO star. Uh, we're a K2 uh, star. We're a hot, uh, hotter star. So this is this is heading towards a red, uh, the red shift, like they're heading towards a like a, a red dwarf or something potentially. Uh, so anyway, let's just go and continue. Um, so these are the the redder the star, the um, the longer the life of the uh, of that you can end, then have with your planetary age as well. So, if this is a blue or a white star, then we wouldn't see anything like two billion years. That would be about the life of the star itself. So, when you have orange, red, and yellow stars, then you end up essentially with the best chance for for the planetary age to go out to allow life. Go continue. 
So now it figures out the geology. So this is the overall geology. Now it's got 51% oceans, mountains of 10%, plains of 39%. And you can see through there, it runs the, um, the gamut of temperatures. <clears throat> it's got a like a, a like these are um, yeah a wet planet with large oceans. The planet will have a thin atmosphere, so um, uh, three seventy two millibars. Now we actually had 0.4 g. If the millibars is lower than the g, it means that aircraft are going to ha have a bit of a difficult time. It's close though. It's close to being the same as the amount of gravities. Uh, so the highest mountain reaches um, yeah nearly eight and a half kilometers. Uh, while the deepest floor is 2.6 kilometres, <clears throat> and it's still got uh, it's still ge geologically active, so there are volcanoes. Um, if you have a bit of a look down through here, you can see how many different seasons there are, like winter, late winter, winter, spring, early spring. Every every season is two months on Earth, so uh, it's this this so its year is it's got a very very long year, uh, with every two months. And you can see there that the um, the tropic area sort of does stay around at quite a nice temperate range actually that's that's actually ideal for growing things so the tropical areas don't change much the and the arctic and antarctic actually do actually have and this is all based on you know the the mountains and that that have been created uh, they actually do they do have a frost it's almost like a permafrost in the arctic but it looks like it does thaw it a little bit in the antarctic so there's going to be a lot of variance between of where the snow will then come, so it, the tropical areas of the planet are really the are the best. Um, if we have a look here. The wind speed of only three meters per second is very very low. Usually, if the millibars are higher than the gravity, uh, this will then get up to around about six. So usually, three milli uh, three meters per second indicates that you're going to have a hard time, um, you know, with aircraft. Not that that matters that much. So just go and click on this one and just see if this is a viable world. That's actually not bad. I mean, having a look at it there, like you've got a nice area through the middle there. This one looks very good, actually. I like. I really quite like the look of this. Okay, look, let's, let's play that one. There's, there's mountain ranges, but there's big, flat, open areas as well. Now, the fact that the, it's going to be so temperate... I'm thinking that we're going to likely to have, uh, we are likely to have either jungle, well, not jungles, but we're likely to have uh, thick forest uh, through the through the centre of the map. Um, but let's go for it because that that tropical, this is ideal for growing crops. Like yeah, um, that 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 works very very well just on in the actual tropical zone. So let's go and continue that one. <clears throat> now this is the biosphere. So um, so uh, so. Uh, what is it? One uh, one point one billion years ago, this planet started the process of abiogenesis. Currently, the planet has uh, complex life forms with skeletons. Uh, types of species include protocellular organisms, bacteria, algae, etc., etc. The top of the uh, evolutionary life form is an aquatic, large, two-meter carnivore. It resembles a crustacean analog. Its uh, chemistry is water carbon based. There's no sentient life forms on the planet. So we actually end up with a heap of nitrogen, some oxygen, argon, xenon, and uh, CO2, uh, trace amounts of, uh, of methane. So methane is going to be hard to extract out of the, out of the, um, out of the uh, atmosphere. Uh, neon, that's the, it's important to sort of see where neon is. Uh, the, the salinity is high, I think. I forget exactly how this one does work. This is the heavy metals in the water, heavy metals in the soil. Uh, rain pH is 12. Wow. That's actually, uh, now it goes, if it's a low pH, I forget how it works between alkaline and, um, but that's really, really high pH. I think mean, that means it's acid. So, um, so um, yeah, so Elliot was saying, what else can you use oceans for in the game? Not much really, but this is a very high salinity, but also high acidity, acidic, is that right? Alkaline goes back the other way, doesn't it? So if it was one pH, but the seven is seven is neutral. I uh, forget what we have here on 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 Earth. I know it's it's not quite neutral. Yeah, low pH is low pH is acid. So high pH. This is alkaline then. So this is like an ammonia type. Um, well, it's got low ammonia in through there, but this is sort of like going to be a, a base, a very high base um, uh, water. And so this one here, if we have a look at it, it's basically got the um, uh, there's really not a lot going on on this particular planet when we have a look at it. Like this is this is the bio the bioform of the planet. 
um, there's really not, nothing much going on. If we have a look at the uh, at the auxiliary information, we can then go and see the buy lobster, the super stack um, evolved. So there's not and there's just vera weed, which is probably you've got sea plants, sea herbivores, and sea carnivores. So there's only life in this in the seas. I think we re-roll this one. Let's re-roll and see what we end up getting. So this is one where we've ended up with um, with a very very uh, alkaline uh, world. Let's just re-roll and see what we end up with. Okay, so this is very, very different. As you can sort of see, we've got much more oxygen, nitrogen, argon. Um, so we've got, and again, if we just go back to the auxiliary information, we can see that we've got land plants, uh, sea plants, sea herbivores, and sea carnivores. So there is life in the sea, um, but uh, there is actually forests and things on the actual ocean, uh, sorry, on the plant, on the land itself. Um, the only dome farms, so that's salinity, yes, that would have been terrible. So we'll just go back to the current step. This isn't bad. Uh, this now is sort of showing that this is going to be quite different. The um, the rain pH is now, now we do have acid rain uh, going back the other way. Um, we've got much higher metal uh, metal in the uh, in through here. The water salinity is a lot less. Um, you yeah, nitrogen oxygen with argon here, yeah, and then with, that's the methane there. So methane is still just trace re in reality. Um, yep, there's uh, shrubs and bushes, so it's only low level uh, in through here in terms of the actual what we end up having. Yeah, just a bit of a bit of uh, ice in the in the Arctic, lots of forests, but just low forests. They're not heavy forest in through here. That wouldn't be bad, um, you know. Like it's, I, I don't, I don't need. Like I know that when I started playing the game, I always felt that I needed to have alien life everywhere. But it's, um, it actually just gets in your way. I, I actually really don't mind this at all, uh, to be honest. I, I like the fact that the forests aren't thick; they're just sort of scrub forests uh, that we actually have to deal with. Uh, it's imperfect, which means that we can actually farm if we're around the equator. Yep, so it's uh, atmospheric human hazard is, is actually xenobiological hazard is hostile. Uh, atmospheric farming hazard, there's no there's no impediment to farming. Um, the alien tissue, the um, what have we got? This, a a um, two meter carnivore resembles a squid. Its chemistry is water carbon based. No sentient life forms. It's too it's too young for sentience. Just scrubs and bushes and um, hazard exposure level limited. No effect. Let's let's play on this planet here. Yeah, there's nice choke points. There's also nice defense points along the rivers. So we've got a lot of river systems that will then be also work fairly well. So this is going to be an interesting uh, war game planet, basically. So let's go across and continue. We'll accept this one. I love just how varied this can be. Now, colonization... We ended up with a lot of people here. Uh, so this is uh, so uh, Pequara and Tertia was colonised in the year sixty six six. So uh, it released, uh, it received colonists for one thousand three hundred and thirty years. So there's a lot of time um, where colonists do come to these sort of planets. So it gives it a lot of time. We've then got a history, and I won't go through the whole history, but there's a lot of stuff where it, this will then have a role essentially uh, with what actually ends up happening uh, with what we find on the planet. So. Even the stuff that when we're playing, like if uh, the Republic military has housed a sizable part of the sectorial divisions on the planet. So things like this will then mean that there should be more uh, Galactic Republic uh, equipment that we will then find. So the Galactic Republic is is who, who runs the, the Empire at this point in time uh, during the colonial eras. Huge, huge influx of migrants. Um, Several mega cities have been constructed. The planet becomes a major player in scientific research. It is managing to even outcompete some old core worlds, and so it becomes quite a rich world. Um, yeah, several small companies have created workshops on the planet. A big corporation has opened up a huge UCM drive facility on the planet. In the strategic location, the key spaceport has been booming and extended with space yards. The great uh, university of the planet is considered one of the best in the sector. Uh, key quantum transmission satellites being operated in the system of the planet. Uh, the planet is so. There's all sorts of things now. One thing I would love is a better connection between this history 
and what we play. I know that Vic, the developer, has actually put it in the game, but we don't. It's not exposed to us. We don't get to really sort of see it. We see it with the things that we find, but we don't get the connection back to the actual history. And the few of the things that I have asked for have come back in. Like we now know what the old sectors were when we're trying to sort of figure things out, because the next zone then tells us stuff. But if we go and have a look, there'll always be one called Landfall. And if we just go back across and try to sort of see where things actually were. Uh, just go back up the top. Landing. There it is, landing there. So this is where the uh, this is where they first came to the planet. So that they, they came down into that zone through there. Then we have like different sorts of sectors. So and these these little uh, symbols this then indicates uh, that I think it was means that it's services. That's mining. So that was a mining town back over through there. Uh, let's have a look and see what else there was. Services, more mining back up that way. Um, mining, mining. So yeah, he heavy mining with some service sectors uh, sort of established in through here. Mining, services, services. Sometimes you'll see farms and things, but there's um, we're not really seeing the farms spread out in any sort of sense so if there was major farming I'm not I'm not seeing these mega cities that they were talking about except for at landing landing looks to be the only actually that one's not too big and not too bad that's got like a lot of a uh, lot of city build up in through there towns being built back out this other side so there's a fair bit going on uh, just with the actual colonization aspect of the game but that's the biggest city so landing is the actual biggest city all right let's go continue the dissolution war. So then, for two hundred years, um, there's like a a, a collapse. Uh, like so, the dissolution war reached uh, Perquir and uh, Tertia in the year 70, uh, 7990. Uh, war consumed all. Technology fell to barbaric levels in over a century of, of uh, warfare and collapse. And so, eight thousand neighbouring systems started hamstering goods and, and and liquid energy. Liquid energy shortages decrease amount of cargo ships visiting the planet by eighty eleven. So 8066, a powerful raider clan decided to set an example and killed all their enemies in Etheria. Now, if we had have looked at where Etheria was, we'd then be able to look at where that what's actually happening there. That will then mean that there should still be raiders around that whatever wherever whatever era that whatever region that actually was. Powerful raider clan decided to set an example and killed all their enemies in Votheris. So we're looking at um, at big sort of warlord type clans. Extremely deadly disease um, hits uh, Topetus and Sicilia. So that could mean that we end up with mutants. Um, we end up with an unknown, extremely virulent disease wiped out uh, a, a potion. Um, that's different again to Etheria. So 8133, an internal struggle led to massive and extremely savage infighting in Asalan. And in 8176, so there should be a, somewhere, a forgotten nuclear reactor went into meltdown, radiating Asalan. So Asalan here... There should be one area on the planet with a lot of radiation. So there's the old landing. That's that's landing. And so this has now got like a, a port back into here. And uh, Starklow is now the, the city that's now been built in the ruins of landing. Uh, as we have a bit of a look around, some of the other other places have now, though everything will have changed its names because it's been like 200 years. Um, if we have, just have a look for the radiation. That should be Asalan. Seeing it there. That's the old mining station that was up there, up the top there. Now the city has, has completely collapsed. We had the city that was back in around here. But I'm not seeing the nuclear reactor. Yeah, normally there's going to be like an area of um, of radiation out from where the reactor went uh, into meltdown. But I can't see it there. Some of the roads are sealed. Uh, like this is all sealed roads between these different areas coming out of landing. Uh, dirt roads going out from this one. And so it's full full on collapse at this point in time. So it's sort of, uh, so the, the game starts you in a, after, a, a, after 200 years of dark age, essentially. Uh, we've only got 1,000, sorry, 1 1.6 million people left. 
uh, scavengers. Now, she has many farmers. Uh, 89% of the people left over are farmers. There's not that many raiders, only 1% raiders and uh, 9% scavengers. So when you actually see such a high level of farmers, this does allow you to play a diplomatic game if you're wanting to. Um, you can win fairly easily just playing diplomatically when you, when you have such a high level of farmers uh, playing. So let's go and uh, we'll accept this one. Let's go continue. So Pequirin Tertia. So we've now just, that's just a summary of what we ended up having. So let's just go and start the game. Okay, what I might do is I'll get you guys to um, to set what we end up having. The primary color, I should might just leave that. That's that'd be okay. Steel keep. I like the idea of that, the name of that one. That looks that looks good. Uh, we'll go president. Uh, that's all okay. Now we end up with three different aspects, which are which are the pro starting profiles. It does have a bit of a bearing as to what sort of people we end up getting. So I might just get you guys to just type in A, B, or C when these come up. So uh, we'll uh, I'll get you guys to just, in the chat, just put in A is going to be for enforcement, B is going to be for government, and uh, C is going to be for commerce. These are the different focuses we're going to have with our profiling. Again, we can work outside of these, but these would just give us the starting points that we end up having for our empire. So enforcement... Um, essentially means that we're going to be more militant. Um, government means that we're going to be more co uh, collective, I guess, collectivist, and uh, commerce means we're going to be sort of wanting to do more with the maritime trade houses. And there will be maritime trade houses we do have to deal with. So A, B, or C, please, guys, just in the chat, and I'll just go with whatever whatever the vote's the highest. Or if you... Um, I know there's about a 20-second delay, so I'll just wait. I'll just... I'll just go and fill up my water, actually, while, we, while, we, while I wait for this. <clears throat> oh, we got an A and a B, and there's another A. There's all A's. Going enforcement, you're going to make me. You're going to make life difficult. Okay, <laughs> by shooting anyone that prote that protested starvation. There we go. So the next one that we have is uh, heart, where we sort of like it's more about sacred oaths and loyalty. Mind, which is they wrote a book and enforced it strongly, or fist, which is they did many deeds. Now, after original intent B, there I'm thinking that's from the previous one. Uh, Rogue saying hi guys and glad to see Shadow Empire stream. So the the differences here is um, fist just means a more heavy-handed approach. Mind means a more scientific approach. Uh, heart is is essentially just a I don't know uh, you know sort of like a high uh, high um, uh, loyalty and oaths etc like that. So um, not morale as such, but that sort of ethics I guess to a large degree. So Peter's then gone with A. Um, so we've got uh, a C and a B, so we need a few, we've got a few C's, a kind of B there, so we're looking at uh, mind and fist at this stage. Mind is good if you've got sentient life forms, but not great otherwise, to be honest. So uh, science research, says Paul, it's, yeah, it's, it does help a little bit. Okay, we've, we've got, we need, uh, we need a couple more just to break the, the, uh, the um, to break the, uh, here we go, another A. A is probably out of the equation, but it's between B and C at this stage. So just next vote for B or C will um, dictate what we, which way we go. Either mind or fist. One more vote, please. One more vote. Nope, I'm going to have to roll a dice. <laughs> roll a dice between... Um, between a and uh, sorry between B and uh, B and, and C. Oh, there we go. Let's see. Got C there. Okay, so uh, C it is. So we'll go fist. So this is um, now the last one is quite an important one. This is actually the sort of style of our government, uh, which is going to be either meritocracy, which again is great if you've got sentient life forms. Autocracy is going to be sort of more stronger militia that will protect and conquer, or of the quality of, of life and, uh, with a democracy. Democracy, we can buy our way out of things. Autocracy, we fight our way out of things. And meritocracy, we essentially sort of um, 
uh, you know, we think our way out of things, essentially. So uh, I'll just leave. So Rogue, I don't know if you're voting for autocracy in this instance. I'm guessing that you may, you, that may be, I'm guessing that you're in this particular one. So I'll put the, I'll put that down as a B for that one. Um, so vote away again, guys, please. This is random as well. Like quite often I'll just go and choose either the middle one or the top one or whatever it might be across all three because it, it doesn't always just stay in the same position. So we've got an A there for meritocracy. Again, it's interesting. Um, um, oh, hang on. C meritocracy. C or meritocracy. We've got a few Cs there. I've got an A there as well. Democracy is... Um, is like for having this many farmers, but democracy is going to make it um, an easier run with that that side of things. I'll just wait for a couple more to come through, and then we'll um, we'll choose that. Oh, okay. So meritocracy back up the top there. So we've got a one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So it's now between A and C. It's between meritocracy and democracy. The next, the next vote for either one of those will uh, will dictate which one we go with, because it's even even at this stage. And I'm just going to pop my air conditioner on. <laughs> Okay, we'll go meritocracy. All right, there we go. So steel keep. We suffered no losses. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Previous president is now buried. Ashes to ashes. Um, you're the president of steel keep. Uh, New Zeke guys wanders the land. We're entering a time of culture. Okay, so um, that's not going to affect us all that much. We do have gladiators. So this will actually help us. We've got bad rations, which is another good one. Um, the negative ones are as good as the as, like they can be as powerful as the as the other ones. Uh, Boomtown. Just got sin spy. Didn't have too much there. I'm just going to go and pause this for a second. Um, I'll just have a quick look and see what we've got. We've got new organisation. We've got uh, Robinson request permission for a person, and we we have the ascension speech. Uh, which we have to give now. The the trouble we have at the uh, in our first move is essentially I'll just go and dismiss this one as well. Danger in the zone. So there's something close to us. Well, here's an here's a like an independent faction. Let's just dismiss this one for a second. We can sort of zoom out and see where we actually are. So there's a maritime trade house in here. Uh, it's the only one that we really have access to. Uh, there's landing back down that other side and that other mining one that we had seen would, would be up here somewhere. So we're sort of in the middle here. And um, we've got poly something in through this other side. Poly Vale is, the, uh, is a small little, little um, uh, probably a farming town, I would guess. Um, so we want to go and we want to take this one fairly early on, uh, as early as we can. And we'll do this one through military um, because it is just so close. It's actually cool having this one as close as it is to where we actually are. So uh, it's always a good idea to just have a bit of a look around to sort of see what's what's going on. Now, it did say that there's a threat um, coming in, which means that there's something within a couple of clicks of our uh, of our city or our assets. If we just go and press the number one key, we can then see where what our assets actually are. So we've got um, so Rixie Farm in through here. If we go across to the actual assets into this side and then click on the um, on the hex, we can then just isolate it to anything we click on. So if you have a look at, at the actual city, we end up with the high command inside the city. We've got the a dome farm three. When it's got this brown color, that means that it's privately run. Uh, so when it's got this grey colour, it means that it's a public sector that we control. So we control this one, but the private sector is controlling these uh, level three dome farms inside the city. Uh, they've got the scavenging area also inside the city because we always start on ruins. Uh, we've got a transport hub back in through here as well. Uh, so that's actually where we're getting our logistics, but we don't control that one. That's controlled by the, uh, the private sector, which is not good enough. And then we've got a private harbour in there as well, which allows us then to uh, to trade with the Maritime Trade House and to do things with them, essentially, coming straight into Tirona. Uh, we have also have a uh, degraded um, liquid energy uh, uh, battery 
uh, back and through here, which only gives us 30 energy, so very low energy. This has changed recently in the game, by the way. Uh, a lot of these sorts of things where it's now got a more nuanced sort of start. So it used to be that you had like a, a generator, which gave you 100. So now it only gives you the battery, which has only got 30. And so that's all we have to spend in terms of powering everything up. And you can see through there, it's going to cost us 10 power just to power the high command building. And if we go back out to Ricky Farms in through here, this one takes 28 power. So you need a 28 energy and use 28 energy of the 28 uh, allotted to the at the start of the turn. This is an agrodome level two that we control. So we've got this particular one here. So energy is a problem for us. I'll go through all the different bits and pieces. Um, so Zarks is saying, I know that Daz is a fan of Iron Fist rule though. <laughs> oh, not really. It's in this game, it can sort of be from anything to anything. And um, so we don't know exactly where all of the other cities will end up being. We need to sort of go and explore from here. Uh, but I always like to have a bit of a look to see what, what's actually going to happen. This is certainly open to us. So we'll go and, and sort of surround uh, Polyvale and uh, attack them fairly early on. Going back to the decisions, the, the first one we're going to have problems with is, is how much um, political points we actually have. We've got 15 coming back in through there. So we'll come back and look at that in just a minute. If we have a look at the uh, management screen, uh, we can then sort of see all sorts of different things into this particular screen. So this one then goes through, again, a summary of the assets that we have that we control in each of the actual zones. So the zone that we have is the Torona zone. It gives us the population of Torona back and through here. This is quite a useful screen, by the way. Also, this can be useful to just sort of see if there's any potential problems. Now, one thing I was expecting there to be a problem with was going to be the... Um, uh, the energy, but the energy actually, we've got uh, 162, the amount of energy currently available at the SHQ, um, 38, yeah, it's, it consumes 38, produces 30 infantry, and it's got, um, so it is going to be going backwards because we've got, our energy requirements are too high, but it's at, currently we have enough energy stored up. So um, where do I find this update? One uh, 126B says, Ernie, you have to opt in to the uh, open beta. And I'll show you how to do that. Actually, can I just go back out, just go back to the map. It's got a weird system of minimize. You have to do that to minimize. To, um, if you go to Steam, you, you can do it in all the different versions of the game. But if you, um, this, is, this is the way to do it on Steam. So you can see it's got Shadow Empire and then square brackets open beta. If you right click on the Shadow Empire name on the, on the left of your, of your library, go to properties and then go down to betas under in, in the properties area. And then in the betas, you'll see a drop down and there'll be a few different sorts of things in through here. So uh, open beta, in fact, it probably is only gonna show unless you're in the actual closed beta which I am, but I don't opt into that one. So the open beta is what's currently available. And so you basically just go and open that one up and then you get all of the changes that, that are being worked on, uh, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, I'd much prefer that with this game than actually just going with the stock standard. So if you go with none, you're just playing with the whatever the current release version is, which can be months old. So um, yeah, Rogue is saying always play the open beta. It's always stable and is the best way to play. And yeah, I agree 100%. I think from my experience, it's fine to leave uh, Transport Hub as public. Uh, initially, yes, but um, that's something that we... And we don't need to worry about that just yet. I'll, I'll go through w what that sort of cutoff point is. We'll, we'll go through that one. Noel is saying, I just bought this game as I like the look of, of it. Uh, delighted to catch a live stream of it so I can get an understanding of how things go in a game. Okay, well, look, I'll, just, I'll go through my steps of what I, what I look for. Uh, where potential problems actually are, things that you don't really not... Uh, what's an account alert? What's that mean? Ah, oh, Headquarters World War II has been revoked. <laughs> All right, so I've, I've read that one. Uh, that um, Because I, I end up with so many different games that come in from developers, they, they have limited life. And so it's not as if it's being... Uh, taken away because I've done something bad but it's um, it, it, the headquarters, I did get the message the other day that headquarters was going to be revoked until the next version comes out and then I'll be given the next version of headquarters, that's a really good game by the way uh, that's coming out in the next, next next month or so I think anyway let's go back to the game so um, 
one of the things before you start to go through your decisions, because uh, our first decision, we've got um, we, like this is going to cost me one political point. I've got 15. Sometimes you're not going to have as many as that. Uh, and I'll show you why that can change. Uh, request permission. This is um, to approve. This one's going to cost me one political. So we're down to 13 already. Then the org decisions are four to go and grab those. So we, we do have enough to do different things. But if we wanted to do other things in here as well, we may need to be storing these up. And um, particularly if we need to start to shuffle people around. Uh, and that can be something we need to just go and check on. Now, we're only playing on regular mode. I'm not playing on any of the really difficult modes. And so in this case, it's not as critical to make sure that we, uh, to see where our, our limitations are in terms of, uh, well, first of all, have a look and see what, you're, what, you're, what you've got, what you're actually spending, um, anything that's going to be less than the term before. So if the, uh, if the inventory goes up, it means that you've got, you've, you're getting extra stuff coming in, which is great. So, yeah, so Ernie's saying, so is the open beta is 126B? Yes, it is, yeah. It updates um, usually about once every couple of weeks, um, and the, the, it just came out yesterday, I think, the, the latest one. Uh, Noel is saying, Daz has some excellent tutorials on the game, a little old now, but still relevant. Yeah, the game, the base of the game hasn't changed a hell of a lot, but there are some certain little things, like this is, is much less energy now at the start than what you start than what you would normally start off with. Um and certain things are going to chew up different resources. Now, one of the interesting things in through here is that we actually have a transport hub, which doesn't actually cost us anything. But if we run the transport hub ourselves, it would cost us a fuel. And so we actually do have a little bit of fuel coming in. You can see there that we're picking up 16 fuel. We're not expending any fuel, and uh, so but except for our units. So as we as we go through and move our units around, they'll then start to uh, start to have a, a fuel requirement. Uh, fuel is um, fuel comes in. Actually, I'll go through all this when we get back out onto the actual game itself. But um, anyway, the assets. Just have a quick look and see what your assets are. This is such a useful screen. This one here. Um, this one. It used to by default start like this, uh, and this is actually feedback that I'd given them because I, I thought for new players, really this is much more important than the list of things that you have through here. But having said that, like. With our food, uh, our food, food situation we actually have through there is getting more and more. We don't need as much food coming in. So if I needed to, uh, with our agrodome through this other side, if I needed to save energy, I could go and click on this and then make it run at lower, at lower production. And so to check, check things for in the preview, if I go from 100% production now to say 50% production, we'll then sort of see that the um, we end up with less, but we're still positive with what we actually have. So we're still in the positives in through that side. We're actually getting more than what we need. And our energy requirements have now gone down to 14. And same, same with the, um, the water requirements have gone down as well. Quite often... Because we're on the edge of a of a of a um, a water source, we're not, water shouldn't really be a big problem for us. Um, and you can see there we've got um, uh, we consumed two hundred twenty five. We've got a, a zone inventory of four hundred and fifty. Uh, it's in reserve and it stays at six hundred. So that must be the maximum we can store at this stage. But when this one actually does go, um, like we can tweak these things. So just be aware that this is a really good screen for just figuring out. What can I what can I turn off or what can I turn off? And so in this case, the agrodome doesn't have to be running at full strength, but there's no real need not to worry about that. So let's just put that one back to 100. This also then will use up a lot more workers uh, as well when we do it. And you can see it's now using up the 450 uh, water, but we're still enough water because we started right on the edge of the of a um, of the of one of the oceans. Uh, if we didn't, we pick up water. It's, just, it's more, really convoluted now the way the game actually does handle that one. That's why if you start off in a desert, um, getting water is a critical component of what you're doing. Um, yeah, let's let's just go to the next one. The models, I always, I always want to know what I've actually got and sort of where we go from here with the models it, just to see what we actually need to be working on. So... Of all the different things with our start that we currently have, all we have is is uh, GIs, machine gunners, buses to, to transport them around, and also recon buggies. Now, recon buggies are really, really important. Now, the, the screen that you want to be evaluating these from is the design screen. So you go across to here. And what you're looking at is the two different 
these two first numbers in through here are the important ones. And so when we have a look at them, the structural design, which is the first one through here, ends up being um, this. This is sort of like any. This is a number between eighty-five and a hundred and hundred and fifteen. Actually, is one hundred and fifteen or one hundred and? It might even go down to seventy and, and up to one hundred and um, uh, what is it? One hundred and thirty. But I think it. I think it's only eighty-five to one hundred and fifteen, which means that this one here, as a structural design, this these machine gunners are as good as you're going to get. And so structural design just means that that's, this is sort of like a, a random number that dictates how good something is just natively. And so our machine gunners are incredibly good uh, in terms of their structural design. The, the, uh, the base design is where they start. Now, this one, the numbers here run between 70 and 100. And so the average for the base design is 85. And so if you've got anything that's way under uh, under um, 100 in this structural design, then you may want to redesign them. So our trucks are at 83, which makes them very, very low. Uh, so it can't be 85, it must be 70 to 130. Anyway, anything over 100 is good. Anything under under 100 is uh, you know can be suspect. 92 is something that I would be wanting to correct. 96, I'm happy enough with. 115, I'm very happy with that number there. This just gives me a bit of an idea as to what their quality is going to be like in terms of, um, of how they then can operate. Uh, and it, it, at the start, we don't have a real lot we can sort of then go and do with anything. Base design, as I say, 85 is our cutoff point. Everyone is above the average for base design. Base design changes over time. And so the more... That, an in, that a unit is, is active and doing things, um, the more it's then going to get, um, uh, it's going to get, essentially get field, field testing. You can see there's no field testing in through here. When we build the next iteration, the field testing then gets applied to the base design and then the base design goes up. But the structural design never changes. That's why if you end up with a poor base design, you really are a bit screwed, and you do need to then go and uh, and sort of relook at that. You also have things like the engine designs. Again, this is terrible for our trucks, um, but okay-ish for the uh, for the Cooper Plus. You can see there the weapon design in through here is actually very high. Again, for the machine gunners, um, okay for the GIs, low for the Cooper Pluses, and then the armor the armor designs as well with how they go with armor. These are all a bit low and through this other side. But overall, I'm actually really happy with the machine gunners. Machine gunners are your defensive um, infantry, whereas GIs are sort of like general, not really offensive. Infantry is not great at offense. So at this stage, we're still early in the, in the game. We don't need to really worry too much about, about redesigning, but it's just nice to know where you stand. Uh, the leaders, now what we're looking for here is is capability levels, is all we're, all we're really looking for. And what we want is capability level four and five. So we don't have anyone in that capability. So we've got some pretty shitty leaders. Uh, so let's not worry too much about them in any sort of sense. Um, the one that we do need to look at is the reserve pool member, because when we get our first person in, that will be the one that we have to then go and deal with unless we bring another one in. So um, the average is about 25 with most of these sorts of things. He's got reasonable intelligence, but the capability is sort of like how quickly they can uh, learn. And, um, and so if, if they've got low capability, they don't learn very well. And so when we end up with somebody in a critical role, even though he's got like high intelligence, he's not going to learn what he has to do. His, his experience won't go up as, as strong as somebody else. So one of our goals will be to bring probably someone else in, I would, I would think. So we'll, we'll have to look at that one uh, a little bit later on. Uh, profiles, we looked at them at the start. We won't worry too much about them. We don't need to worry about them. Technologies, we, we start off with all the early tech. We do need to try to get this, this new tech. Now, the, the ones that we're going to be needing is actually going to be the uh, Economic Council, just to pick up some of these other things like the power plant, the university, solar energy is critical. Uh, we're going to have to really aim for that one as fast as we possibly can. Uh, ammunition factory back and through here. Um, the hospital. All of these things are quite important. The military council would be okay, but the economic council is critically important. So I need a good leader for that. Um, so that's and, and at the moment we don't have anyone that's really any good with that particular one. Let's just go back to the map. Uh, 
So we can see that our leaders are a bit of a problem. I'll just press number one again so we can sort of see what's going on. I'll just click off the other side. Uh, other things for us to have a bit of a look at before we get started is the um, uh, strategic map. Sorry, let's distract cards. Where's the strategic map? There it is there. Just to see who's around us. And so we've got um, Pekino, uh, Pekino Pax is uh, down below us. And this then just tells us, like when we click on these ones, this is uh, Culture Unknown. Uh, 33, unclear what their intentions are at this early stage. Polyfa Polyvale Confederation, Unknown Culture, 35, they're pretty friendly. Uh, Queen's Fort is also, we've got a border with them as well. These are all minor factions. Brasola Territory. Now, when we see the words territory, it means that we're dealing with, um, with unusual units in there. So this is not an area that we really want to be trying to go into. This is often going to be scavengers, uh, could be arachnids, uh, could be like, you know, run by spiders, could be run by robots. We just don't know, but of, of limited value to us. And we've got, so it, our north is basically full of territories. And then we've got Steel Keep, which is ours in through the middle here. We still want to find a protective zone to stop these things from encroaching. But really, the uh, for us, the growth is in the south as, we, as to where we want to end up going. Um, in terms of other things, we go back to our strat cards. We go back to nation. We can actually recruit juniors, but these require another eight. So of the 15 that we had, by the time we had played all of the... Um, the current decisions, we're down to nine. So we can still bring a junior in. And this is going to be, because our leaders are so terrible, uh, this is going to be really, really important. We also do want to increase the income tax, but let's just wait a little bit uh, for that one to come in. Let's just go and recruit the junior. And we'll execute the stratagem. And it doesn't tell us who the leader actually is. We'll just click on OK and just go back across the management screen, leaders. And we now have a, 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 a cap three is okay. So Lyra Keynes, um, high charisma, medium intelligence, unfortunately. God, this is one of these tricky things where technically he's a better person for the, uh, for the job of uh, the economic counselor. Um, we can sort by different things in through here as well. Uh, if we go to, say, technical skills and then just go to, say, science, we can then sort of see what their science... No one's got any science skills. Uh, what about uh, inventor skills? No one's got any of that either. So no one's really in a good position. She will learn faster. Her experience will sort of... Uh, will do better, but she's really not great. What about Vance? What have you got? He's got high intelligence. Um, he'd be better ultimately, but he also now is, he's also got very very good. Um, like he's already heading down towards the uh, command, so he commands the second motorized light infantry brigade at this point in time. Um, these are cap ones. Cap one and two usually are, he, he's he's too good for that role. But to move him out of that role is going to cost us a bit. Supreme Command Council is only a cap one. Wow, look how unintelligent he is. He is terrible. So um, that's, a, that's a problem. Um, the Secretary, sometimes you can use these, but she's not great. So I'm just going to leave her where she is. Uh, the Advisor, sometimes he's a cap three. Actually, he's not bad. Technic technician for when we actually do the um, uh, once we start to sort of get the models and, and need to get the more models, we can actually use him in that role. But his intelligence, he would actually work fairly well with whoever we place in there. He would actually be a better person. But to to call him up and then relieve him yes, is going to cost me too much at this early stage. So uh, otherwise, yeah, I mean, we can just use him for other things. So let's just leave him where he is. And then the, uh, the commander of the first SHQ is only cap one as well. This is a big, big problem for us. He's only 23 years old, so he's going to be around for an awfully long time, uh, being very, very inept. 
so he's in charge basically of the uh, of the of the uh, groups. Wow, that's a really shit group. <laughs> this is one of the. Uh, this is terrible. Uh, so anyway, we've got that junior. We just we really can't afford. We've got seven points left over. We do need these for the other bits and pieces. Economic council. We have to bring the economic council in. Uh, personal guard. Yes, we'll allow that one. So this is as long as it's sort of positive for everyone. I'll just allow that to actually happen. This is a, an autocracy type uh, thing. It's going to change our profile slightly. And so we'll just go that way. And ascension speech. Now, this one goes up again. This is the advisor. Um, the enforcement goes up by plus 11. We can push the others up as well if we wanted to. Um, now, I don't tend to worry too much about the profiles. I'll explain what they actually are. Like The profiles are listed back over through here. And so I've got the three different areas. So this is the uh, politics is, is the first one. So this is, it goes from like politics uh, meritocracy, which is at 48 points at this point in time. Then we've got uh, politics democracy running through and through this other side and then politics um, autocracy running at 40 at 40 and through here. So that's that's just with our actual politics. The next one down is to do with the society. So we've got enforcement, uh, which would be the one that we'd actually then boost that one by plus 11 if we went that way. Uh, we've got commerce down through here, and then we actually have uh, government is the focus we end up having. Uh, down through here, we then actually have um, the psychology of, the, of, our, of our people. Uh, so we can have sort of like fist, mind, and also then heart. And so when we chose them at the start, we started off by choosing these ones, and we tend to find that the, uh, that the groups will then come in with their own bent in a particular way. Like um, this one is pro-enforcement, so this is why this one likes wants us to choose that particular um, uh, event in through there. So quite often the the people that you start with, like what has she got? She has got, um, she doesn't like meritocracy. So if we, any decision we make for meritocracy, uh, she's going to be against it. And she's also against commerce. So she's a bit of a, a um, was it a doubting Susan or whatever it might be? <laughs> anyway, um, you've got the goon squad in your, in your cabinet, says, okay, she's all, Paulson saying, I thought you had a meritocracy. How are these leaders the best uh, that you have? Yeah, no, it doesn't start off that way. It's not. A, it's just. It's just where the focus is, and so if we look at meritocracy, you can sort of see through there. Meritocracy denotes that your nation strives to get the best people to the highest positions. Uh, okay, so, and then we've got different feats, which are essentially the cards, and so can give regime feats. So Senate, so leader relation plus two if low if low ambition. Uh, accomplished it, envoys, so uh, gain at meritocracy 40 and three uh, three turns the highest. So uh, diplomacy roles are plus 30. And we also then have a uh, stratagem of recruit a talent. And so by having meritocracy, we end up with a um, with the potential to pick up cards. And actually, that would be a good one for us. So we'll eventually be able to replace our cabinet over time uh, with uh, with better people, hopefully. So capable supervisors. So um, so recruiting talent, like we recruited a junior, but we will, because we're over 40, like we're 48, it means that we are going to be getting uh, the chance to get these cards. In fact, probably the easiest way to look at this is to go back into the management screen and look at the profiles in through here. And so the way it sort of works, if we have a look at meritocracy, we're at 48. So this one here, we can pick up these cards of uh, recruit a young leader that is capable back and through this other side. Now, if I go and uh, I can't really sort of click on that one so much, then when we get to the next one, the supervisors, uh, we get this one at meritocracy 50. So if we can push meritocracy up uh, into this one here, we can then get capable, super, this is capable supervisors. We end up with benefits of uh, per 1,000 population per, per work, we end up with extra food. And it does uh, unlock the grand convention. So, um, um, you need the organisation interior council to generate these stratagems, a rare thing, a grand convention assembles all your leaders together for rallies and workshops. So it just, again, gives experience to the, to the people. So you can see there's a focus as you go through them. Uh, martial tournaments, when we come back to this one through here, once we get to 60, meritocracy, we end up with these characters. These are champions, are great warriors. These can be, be then placed in with our, uh, with our military. And then we end up with... Um, uh, uh, give a donation your country needs you so these end up where we can sort of do different things where people will then sort of supply things back as we go back through the other ones though see so these are active we're on 40 autocracy so we actually do end up with like the, the bunker busters which we can uh, uh, you know there's a chance we're going to pick those cards up 
Uh, we've got uh, forced re relocation, so we can round up barbaric folk and, and move them off. We, we've got call to power. Uh, we've got enforcement down through here is also now in, in a position where we can end up with the military police. Uh, we've got um, a stratagem of emergency tax and also militia enthusiasm. So these are different things we will get. We don't actually have free market or bureaucracy. Uh, volunteerism back into here as well. We've actually up to here in, in, um, in Fist, which then gives us a chance to pick up um, no retreat cards. Uh, we've got Warlust, which gives us ambush cards and also a um, People's Heroes uh, potential uh, addition that we can then put into the um, into the various units. So these play a role, and some of the more powerful ones end up sort of being you know, once you start to really specialise, you end up with um, with getting fairly fairly high level cards when they do come in. But this one's not bad, I've got to say. Recruiting the talent, um, I'm very happy with uh, keeping the meritocracy going. So let's go back and have a look and see uh, when we go back to the map again. So we, the choices for us were were enforcement. Commerce and, and so if we have a look again, meritocracy was uh, this one through here. We didn't have the option for that one through there, but recruit talent at um, is where it currently is. Um, I'm happy to keep that at around that level. Uh, this one here is enforcement goes up. Now enforcement at fifty, we end up with uh, efficiency drive and threat and leader, where we can sort of put people back in their place uh, if we went that way uh, with enforcement. Um, we also then have Commerce, which will go up by plus 14. This one would then open up um, Gift to Faction. Private Investment is actually fairly good. And the Private Economy Bonus of plus 40% is actually very, very good with the free market. That might be worth going for, like pumping this one in, or Government at plus 14. In this case, we take this one also back up into the, um, into the next level. So uh, gain at government 40, uh, so bureaucratic uh, bonus of plus 40, uh, governor convention, bureaucratic push, and a unit feed of medical teams. But I'm really thinking the private sector, like this will give, the, this will allow them, if we go, if we promote the commerce and get that one higher, that's going to then allow the private sector to then build better uh, in amongst our city. So that I think it was worth going for, even though it makes him happier. Uh, we'll just go with this one in through here. I hope that makes sense. By the way, there's a little arrow that you see. When you hit a certain number, and I forget what it, what the number actually is, but it will then it will then detract from the other area, but it doesn't do it in this early stage. So I forget what the num numbers actually are, but that one through there. So the commerce went up by plus 14. So we now actually have 47 commerce. And so if we now have a look back at the um, at the management screen, uh, commerce will now be in this free market. And so there's a chance we're going to pick up these cards, like Gift to Faction and also um, Private Investment. So we, we may pick these cards up, but we also do actually now have available. So um, um, <clears throat> your nations not have this regime fit. You still have zero chance. Yeah, that's okay. Um, private Economy bonus of plus 40%. That's actually fairly high. That's a, that's a good one for us to, to keep. All right, so that's, that's those. I'll just zoom back out again and have a bit of a look. So that's the profiles now under control. We'll just go back into here again. If I just click on here, I do like to see what's happening with these. Another thing I like to do is uh, to at the start of the game is to just, this is L. If you press the L key, it just shows you your current logistics as to where things actually are. Now, initially, we're not going to see that, but that's going to come out of, our, um, out, of, out of here. We'll talk about logistics in a little while. So we end, we end up having two armed groups. So um, the actual armies that we end up having is uh, we've got this, uh, this is the, the mechanized, the third mechanized light um, infantry. If we go and click on these ones, we can see that they're just GIs, which are mainly going to be used for the attacks that we're going to then go and do. So let's just go and move into these different locations. And we want to surround this to a large degree, if we can. Um, now this is the other group. This is the, um, these have got machine gunners and GIs. I'll keep them back for now. And I'll just bring everyone across that's in the same group. There should be a commander there somewhere. That's the second motorized. So that's the um, that's the command group for this particular group. So that's that one. The first infantry is the ones with the machine gunners. Now we're gonna I'm gonna 
potentially just have a look in through what we've got in, in through here. We do have one militia, like this is a um, militia group. Um, if I click on it a second time. So this one can then move up. There's no roads up through here into these territories, but there are roads down this way. So let's just go along the roads. We picked up this spa area. And we're on, a, we're on a small, like always look for areas that you can defend. This isn't great, but there is like a little river that runs through that side, which isn't too bad. Um, we're going to definitely need a presence back at, at home. So I've got a couple of, uh, I've got a, f a few different groups in through there. Let's go and move the, um, let's keep the machine gunners back home and we'll just move these up and like the other two, the other two militia forces that we had just to establish a, um, an area around the north for, for these other ones that will then be coming back through. And I might as well use these to go and help this other fight. These are just marching on feet. We will be, we will be wanting to go back out this way as well. I'll, I will just push this one out just to push the border back out. And we want our leaders close. Let's just move them in. We've got Supreme Headquarters back through there. Um, another militia there. Ultimately, we're going to be wanting the, mili the militias to also then just take take spots. But I'm thinking that this area through here potentially could be anything. We don't know what's actually up that way. So we're just pushing the borders back at this stage. Um, now, sorry guys, I'm missing probably a lot of the comments in through here. If you've got a question for me, just do an at Daz Tactic. It will then sort of uh, highlight in red. It doesn't beep at me, unfortunately. In Twitch it does. Um, <laughs> so uh, Paul was saying, uh, yeah, I thought it was a meritocracy. How are these leaders the best you have? Yeah, they're pretty bad. Uh, me, myself and I are saying uh, uh, Cap 1 leader gets uh, 5 experience per turn. Cap 3 gets 8 experience per turn. Using the skills only gives them uh, usage pips, uh, what directs uh, what skills they train up. Uh, I think I get more than that, I think. Um, okay, I don't know the specific, so, uh, but I thought that there was, like, you do notice Cap 3s, of Cap 4s and 5s tend to very, they rocket through their levels very, very quickly. Um, so Vaint's saying, how's, yeah, the, the bad leaders, but entirely new, the, every new hire is good. That's hopefully what we should end up getting. Uh, so me and myself are saying, uh, I been saying exception is uh, combat commanders. Those get XP from combat. Everyone gets XP from whatever they're doing. So the, you get you get a bonus, and it's the, it's the capability is where that bonus kicks in. Like you get a lot more. We can have a look at it and see what actually happens when we do different things. Um, every turn that we do a decision, um, someone is making that decision, and so that they they end up getting experience from it. Um, so. Um, now saying, um, yeah, me myself and saying, yeah, just checked. Commander of the first SHQ got uh, 14 XP in one turn from combat. Um, so me myself was asking, no, you won't because enforcement is still higher. No, it's it's it kicks in. Like if it's um, if it's uh, if it's coloured this way, it's active. So this is what this is how it works. You can have. You can special. You can go broad or tall uh, with the profiles. So, um, so what I think, I think is what you're referring to. So, if you have, if you, like, it's easy to have everything in the 40s to 50s, uh, like everything basically. You can push that one out, but you can't really specialize. To specialize, you do it at the expense of the others. But these all will kick in. So we have a chance of grabbing all of these now. So. Um, so even though autocracy is lower than um, than meritocracy, we still have the chance of picking up bunker busters and these other different things as well. These other cards, uh, even though it's in the same little area, and so in this case, government we don't have any because we're lower than the forty that was required. But in this case, the um, uh, yeah the we still have a chance. Um, it, like it, it doesn't colour it otherwise. So that's I hope that makes sense. Um, Hang on, it says, um, no, the number is in the red, you can't get it. Hang on, what's that? The number is in red. I'm in the right spot. I'm not seeing the red, sorry. Um, only if the number is green, check the mouse over. Am I in the right spot? Is this where you want me to be? Or 
was it must might be back here somewhere. Not seeing any reds or greens. Not seeing reds or greens. Sorry, there's a 20 second delay. So when I ask questions, it's going to be, um, and then by the time you you uh, respond, it's going to be, um, it's going to be different. So I'm not sure where you're seeing those numbers, the green and the red. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what you're referring to. Sorry. Um, not the skills, but what are you what are you actually referring to? Not the skills. The panel itself. No, I'm not I'm not with you at all. I don't know which uh, panel you're referring to. Do you mean the um nah, I'm not seeing the reds and greens. I'm not seeing the reds or greens. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that you mean the profiles. That's all I can really go off from what you're saying. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what you're referring to. Sorry, me, myself and I. I'm not understanding. So, yeah, um, if you can just be a bit more explicit. I'm pretty slow when it comes to, um, uh, comes to understanding things, to be honest. I will actually, I'll put my hand up about that one there. Um, read the text in the mouse over. It's always a. Um, it always says X turn the highest. I'm not with you. I'm not really not with you. Am I in the right panel? Maybe start there. Uh, I don't want to go too slow, but I do want to. I do want to cover what you're saying because um, it sounds like you know what you're talking about. So, <laughs> sort of, if I can learn something, I always like to learn from this. This screen, hover over the panels. Yep. Yeah, okay. So let's just say that we're going with free with commerce, which is lower than enforcement. So, um, Uh, okay, so it says uh, your nation, uh, okay, maybe it's this topic, your nation does not have this regime feat, you still have zero chance of return to gain it because the profile has only been the highest profile in the group for zero rounds, it needs to have been the highest for three rounds, oh, I think that's what you mean, right, where's the green, I'm not sure where the green and reds are, uh, there is a thriving free market in your nation, so, so it's, is it only the top one, that's weird, I didn't think that was the case, the enforcement, so um, you still have zero per chance uh, because the profile has only been the highest profile in the group for one round. It needs to have been the highest for three rounds. Okay, so we don't have any of these just yet. Interesting. Okay, we'll see what happens. The red text that tells you how many rounds you need to have it. I'm not seeing red text. I'm a bit colorblind, but... Um, Red text that tells you how many rounds you need to have it. The highest profile, it turns green up to showing you the percentage chance you get it every turn. Yeah, I'm not seeing the red. I'm not seeing the red or the green. I'm not sure where you guys are, are referring to that. Um, all right, we'll see what actually happens there, I guess. So I think I'm, yeah, I, th I think what I might have, may have said then was wrong. It looks like it is just one of them. But So we'll have a look at that over, over, the, t over the turns. Okay, we've pretty much done everything we can. We've only got one political point left. At this point in time, so we'll just go and end our turn here. Oh, okay. After the after three rounds, the third turns to a green percentage. Now, I don't play much with the profile, so it'd be interesting to see see how that one actually does work. Suffered no losses. No, it made five decisions. Eighty four reports are waiting for you. Time of culture. Okay, so we did actually pick up. The scav teams found ancient storage. We've got two high tech items. These aren't that great other than for, for um, and we've got four machinery that is actually quite useful and some credits which is also useful that's one thing we didn't have to look at actually the organizations generated two new two new factions by pressing L we now get to see where the flow of logistics is going which is fine so we can sort of see those I've got it also colored so that we end up uh, going show the um, show the operational logistics I do this so I can see where the greens finish and so you can see through there, it goes from green to aqua. Like if I turn that one on or off, it's a, it's actually, it looks like it's all pretty much green in through there. So that one's still under full, full, um, 
uh, full sort of production type thing in through there. Let's just stay on this side of the river with these. Um, I just want to block them off at the stage. Just move down that road. Move these up. Yeah, this is now changing colours where the, where the supply is now sort of dwindling away. It goes into red when it becomes uh, too difficult. So we'll just push this back until we can get sort of like a, an area that we can then defend. Back up this other side. Um, if we have a look at these, is that going to show us much? We'll have a look at that in another turn. Now, money-wise, we're doing okay. So that's actually still okay here. We've got 18 um, political points again. We do actually have a whole lot of decisions. Actually, maybe we should look at those before we do anything. So, um, so dissatisfied, dissatisfied elements in Polyvale Confederation. Apparently, there is growing dissatisfaction inside Polyvale Confederation. Their president seems to be bordering on the insane. Uh, we're in contact with a mysterious opposition leader calling himself uh, Don Diego. He says that if we can give him just a little support in, and we're promised to invade, that he can organise a fifth column of rebels to rise up and help us gain a swift victory. This is actually a good one for us. And so it's going to cost me 250 credits. Definitely want to pay for this one here. One political point, democracy goes up, heart goes up. Uh, but this is actually ideal for us. So we will actually... That's only one political point. That's what we have to be careful of at the moment. We need to set the national budget which we'll come back to in just a minute. Uh, org decisions. This is the Economic Council. They need a new leader. Now, she does have the best suitability rating, even though she doesn't have the intelligence because of her capability level. So I will appoint her into this role. It's going to cost me... Um, actually, there's nothing... That's just a full-on appointment. So we won't, we won't try to shuffle anyone. We don't have the political points to do that one. So we'll bring her in. Her relation now has gone up, which is good. Uh, we'll come back to this one in just a minute. The zone decisions. So Rogue Doctor in Tirona. Now this one here is, uh, this is the governor of Tirona. This actually is, is giving us this information. We discovered a very secretive doctor in Tirona. He is hidden away in the ruins outside the center. He seems to be cooperating with, all, with our own scientists on a, on a non-official basis. And it seems he is uh, giving beneficial advice now and then. However, it seems his experiments are a bit of a twisted nature. His field of research is, is munitions and disease. Some people think he poses a risk. What should we do? So if we try to close his lab, she again will be pretty bad. Um, her charisma level is low. Uh, she does actually have some skills coming back up. So that when you see the little asterisk, this is then showing what they've, what they've rolled recently. And so... Um, you can see their recent skill usage, four usage points. And so it gives them, it ultimately gives them experience as they as they do different things. So she used two points in through there. Science, you use two. Prospecting is two. Prospecting is quite important for her at this stage. Three. Agriculture was two points. Uh, back in oratory, uh, two points in through there. So in this case, uh, she it's going to come down to her skill set, which is not that great. And so if we just go and exit that one, so if we hover over this one, uh, close the labs, this is a covert ops skill. So probable, a probable calculation of covert ops role of a die 100 plus 11. So this, the improvised, improvisation bonus of three, leader relation modifier is, uh, is eight. So she must have improvisation. Yeah, she's got improvisation down through there. So she's, we're getting, a, we're getting half, the, uh, half the levels of that basically kicking in as a little bit of a bonus. But for her to actually roll, to, for her to be able to have the nous to be able to close down the, uh, the lab um, is um, we need to roll a, um, there's a difficulty of 119 and the most we can roll is 111. So it's just not going to happen. But they want us to try, this guy wants us to try the effort. But I'm going to do nothing because it's also going to cost me six political points. So we'll do nothing for now and just leave the doctor where he is. Now, when you do that, it means that there's now a doctor in Tarona, essentially, that um, that will then be uh, something we can then act act on at some point in the future when, when we decide to. So we've got dissatisfied elements in the polyvale. This is one that we definitely want to be doing, so I'm just going to go yes. Roger that. So click on OK. National budget. Now, we've got 3367. The Supreme Command Council is... Um, is really is, is how we get our political points. 
it's a very important role, unfortunately, but 33% only going back to the Economic Council is not enough for us. We need that on up. So I might go 45, 55. That's going to make the uh, Supreme Command Council member a, uh, a little bit unhappy. Now, this, is, this takes a little bit of um, explanation as to how things actually work with the councils. Uh, what we want to do through here is, this is actually how we allocate the points that she gets. I'll just get, try to explain how this one actually works. So when we go back, if we go back to um, rep reports, yeah, this is the Empire dashboard. When we go to, back to the reports, and we can see that we're loved, loved by the people in through here. But what's actually interesting is we end up with getting um, the bureaucratic points. Now, we've got, um, and this is the political points, we're going to end up with 16 political points next turn, and it's saying 78 is what it's anticipating is, is what we're going to get for the, um, for the bureaucratic points. Uh, what we got this turn, though, was, um, uh, like, this is actually how it did split. It's, it's, or it's, it's sort of splitting, the budget's allocated, so we're going to be getting 38 points, 38 of the bureaucratic points is going to come into the Supreme Command Council. That's being split 50-50 between political power, which is the bureaucratic points, and general stratagems, which are the cards that we get. And so this is quite important. In the Economic Council, the, the 18 bureaucratic points that they're going to be getting is going to be split equally between discovery, research, prospecting, economic policies, and MTH liaison. So we've got all these different bureaucratic points going through there. But what's interesting with this is you'll notice that even though there's points going into research, none of it is actually being placed into research. So it actually doesn't like so it doesn't allocate the four that should be going there into research. What it does instead, if there is no research going on, it puts everything into discovery. Now what we need, and this is actually this is it's easy once you understand how this one works. When there's no research, it goes into discovery for a lot of the different different sort of scientific um, councils. If we go back into the management screen and go to techs, <clears throat> we desperately need solar energy. So we definitely we definitely want that one through there, and so we need to discover it first. Um, so that's that's going to be really quite important uh, that we that we get that discovery early on, which means that we can basically put uh, everything into um, into um, uh, into basically research and hardly anything in discovery but don't give any research we don't get them to do any research itself so I'll try to show you what I mean by that so when we go back to the decision making and vice versa by the way as well like it's uh, the, the discovery the, like there always will be something to discover so we can put the discovery down very very low like say 1% or something like this uh, prospecting that will just happen over time. So let's go and lock that one in. Let's bring our prospecting down to say about say 10%. It is important that we find things. Economic policies, I'll keep that one down at say 10 as well. And then the MTH liaisons, I'll keep that down at 10. Now what that does is this now changes my research priority change up to 69%. So most of the bureau, bureau, bureaucratic points are gonna be put into research at this point in time. So let's confirm that. And when we have a look now at the, uh, at the reports, we should now see a, a different split. So discovery is uh, down to 0.4%. Uh, research is 31% of the total budget is going to go into researching, um, you know, you know trying, to, trying to find uh, different technologies. But because even though that was at 1%, um, sorry, even though that was at 1%, we've still got eight bureaucratic points going back in there Ultimately, that will then change next turn to even more. But we're going to end up with a lot going essentially back into the discovery uh, until we actually start to research. I hope that makes sense. But that's um, when you see discovery and research, I tend to always put my, um, my research high, discovery low, and then just not research when I, when I want to be discovering something. So it sort of becomes something where you can then re research quite quickly. Now, I want to take... One of the things with the attacks that we actually have is, um, in fact, we've done all our decisions now. If I go and, and look to the, if I just press number one, have a look and see what's actually around in through this other side, you can see there that we've got like small creeks that are running through around in through here. So for the attacking, I don't want to be attacking through a creek if I can help it. Like sometimes you've got no choice. Little creeks aren't really a problem, but big rivers are. Like this here is a really, really good choke point. That's even that's a medium river. 
Uh, where's a big one? I think technically that's a major river running through there, running through there. So all of this, this sort of um, this this group of river systems through here is very very defendable. Um, as we come back down further down this way, there may be thicker rivers. You can see it goes from a medium river along that hex line, then becomes like small creeks that run off that side. They always come from the mountains. I love that the map generates like this. But this is where, uh, in this instance, um, now we, again here, if we if we're attacking mainly from these two locations into Nanmo, when we when we do this one here, that's going to give us our best uh, best course of, of moving in. The other ones, it's got it's then surrounded by water a little bit around the other three, which gives it a, a defensive uh, perimeter. And so when we have a look at what's going on with this, if we have a look at again at the, um, uh, just press number one on through here, the only place I don't really want to have people is this one in here because then they are attacking across the river. Just press number one. So I'm going to move through. Now this is a little town, so Moxamonu. Now also, by the way, those things we picked up, we did we discovered, I think, uh, Blue Spa. So we would have picked up one of the loots from there and also this one here we picked up loot from. Uh, these are the ones we had already discovered. Now, another thing I want to do is I want to give them an, an, a way out from the city so that they don't uh, uh, stay to the last man. And we want to surround them with the uh, with each of the different types of units because um, they don't fight as effectively when they're fighting as a group. So we want to surround them like so. I'm trying to get um, one each of these. Um, in fact, we've got these now on the other side. I'm going to have to keep that one where that is. So, yeah, it's not going to help all that much. But anyway, we'll just do what we can. So we'll see how we go there. She's got a cool hat. She does indeed. So what we need to do is we need to now wait... You can see through there, like we've got problems with supply coming in. So supply received, if less supplies received uh, than requested. So 62, this one's just showing that there is an issue getting supply out to this particular unit. Uh, we should find that same with all of these. And what that is, is we've probably run out of fuel, I would guess. Uh, yeah, fuel is, um, fuel is because we're, we're running these uh, with trucks, the, the fuel situation is terrible with what we actually have at this point in time. So... So that's not working well for us. Uh, we'll just keep that one where that is. But um, anyway, if supplies won't really matter. The thing that's important for us is the readiness. It's just making sure that we've got as high readiness as we can. These are only 65, 78, 61. So these aren't really in a position to attack at all. Uh, whereas these guys here, 97, these aren't too bad. Now, when we declare war, uh, we will end up getting the uh, those the fifth column will then also appear around here somewhere, which we can then either use to, for the attack or move into other locations. I'll probably end up using them in other locations, I think. Uh, that's what we need to do this turn, I'm pretty sure. I always forget that there's something I should have done. Just look at the strat cards again. Now, increasing income tax. Um, the money situation is still actually okay. The bad rations, this one will also then reduce the um, the, mor the morale of uh, units. Now, I do want to do this one so I can get more fake cards, but I don't want to do it. Actually, I could do it now, I guess. That will just give me the fake cards that I can then start, start to spend. I might as well do it before we get too, too involved. So 20% lack, uh, loss of morale with the bad food, but we now have three fate cards. I don't think we've got anything else we can really go and do. Oh, we've got gladiators and boomtown. Gladiators we definitely do want to use. So we need to go and choose our target town. So just at Torona. And so what this will then do is it'll just make the people happier. So we'll execute this stratagem. Order received. Boomtown I won't worry about at this stage. The propaganda assistant so um, that's not something we want to use just yet either and then the MTH is I'm not really keen on giving them money at the stage so let's just leave that one 
off. And we could recruit another junior, but um, there's no real need to at this stage. If we leave them ho hovering around too much, it just uh, they end up sort of doing nothing much at all. So let's just leave them where they are. Okay, so that's sort of where we are. Let's uh, end our turn here. Okay, so at Moxie Mono, we end up with a whole lot more credits, which is great. Um, okay, we're expanding, that's good. There's units with low supply. Now, this will be the fuel again. Uh, I might show you this on now, actually, as to what's going on with the, uh, with the, with the problems we have uh, with, our, with our logistics and how we then try to correct those and, and sort of work them for the future. So um, it's just saying that there's, there's a problem with low supply. And we can see that with the little blue dots. It's just saying there's an issue. And this one here has got yellow. So there's an issue with supply there. These ones are green, so there's no supply with no issue with those. These are green, there's no issue with those. So let's just talk a little bit about log how the, the logistics works. Now, metal production, we do, it does suggest that we actually, I should have done this sort of stuff a bit earlier. Uh, we need to get metal production underway. Um, yep, promise is a promise. So if we just press number one again, um, if we can find metal, and we, I don't think we've found any at this stage, but we will start to, uh, the, the uh, economic counsellor will start to bring things in. Now, there's no decisions to be made this, this turn. Um, yeah, so there's no, I can't see anything through here. If I go to the strategic map, I can then go into the zone, into the stats, and I can then look for metals, but it's not showing up there at all. Oil, actually, it is below us, but you can't see it there, which is sort of weird. Is the water as well, which we won't need at this location. Anyway, we'll just go back. Strat cards, we didn't pick anything else up, did we? No, that's still the same same group. All right. Press number one. So uh, to analyse what's happening, the problem that's happening in through here, when you start to see uh, different coloured things in through this other side, it's showing that all of these have got, like that one's yellow, this one's blue. If we go back into a Supreme Command Council, it's it's actually still green, which is good. But we can go and click on the supply area through here to see what's actually going on through this other side. And so it tells you from the Supreme Command Council, everything gets collected here first. So it goes back to the S1, and it, at S1 it then gets sent out along the production line. So by having L turned on, I can see what logistics is left over uh, back and through here. We've got a whole lot of different things. We've got used points. So this is all of the used points coming back through here, but we've got, we've got a surplus of points. This is actually how our logistics is moving around. This is the initial points that came through. Uh, we've got bottlenecks. There's no bottlenecks. It's all flowing very, very smoothly through it. Preview points for next turn. Now, one thing you'll notice is that we've got these special little numbers and through here, like 249 through this other side, 400 with uh, with 18 coming back in this, this other side as well. These are pull, what's called pull points, and it's fairly easy to understand. Like if we go into, for example, this location at this asset and have a look at the asset there, it needed 200 logistical points and 476 were present. So there's way too much logistics going into that, into that location than what's required. So... What I can do is I can start to, if I'm, if I'm trying to make sure that things are, are flowing smoothly, and in reality, what I'd like to do is, is to clean things up. If I go into the current points, you'll see that there's some funny numbers, like 304, 310, 142, 143. It's not quite as streamlined as it, as it probably could be through these different areas when you start to see those. Not that it matters that much. It's a bit of a dark art, actually trying to figure out how these things actually do are calculated. But we're just a couple of little points off through there. But this one through here is not really anything that we require. Uh, to, we don't need for like all this, all this going into a Rixie farm. We just need two hundred. And so uh, one thing that's good to do pretty early on, really, and get in the habit of actually doing it, is if you press the T key. I think it is. I'll just go back to where it is and through here. If you go back to traffic signs, which is the T, 
So if you press T, you end up in the traffic signal area um, mode. And so uh, if you go and click on a location and click on it a second time, you're then going to have how you how you set the traffic up for your logistics. And so what I do here is I um, blocking. So when it, when it's going to be blocking different things. I don't want to be blocking pull points, and I wish that this was off by default because it make you pretty much always want to have pull points going through. So I'm going to actually go and have the pull points are not going to be blocked at all, and then the road that comes down this way, I can either try to manipulate it. I've got 800 logistics coming from this location. Half of it goes down that road, and half of it goes down this road. So I could say, okay, look, I only want, um, I only want you know 25% going down this way so if I go to 20% it's then going to and if I go if I go and click on that one through there for example it puts a block at 20% running down that particular road and um, if we go back to I can't look at the that's the start turn I can't see the preview there if I choose the um, truck station yeah no it still won't let do the preview okay that's all right Yeah, I can't preview it. That's all right. But anyway, the um, the truck, the, we've got 800 logistical points. Um, there are pull points happening of 244 is happening to the southeast, so down this way. And then there's uh, pull points of 92 being, being applied to the south. And so they're what's being pulled through. But if I block everything from there, if I block off that completely, but don't have pull points selected, it will still allow whatever pull points being requested to go out to that particular location and then send everything else down the other road, which is what I want. So if I just go and clear, uh, go back, that's then going to ultimately, if I go back into the view of the of the preview points, we'll then see that we've got, um, we've got pull points of, of, of um, 249 essentially is what's being pulled through there. It's saying that 244 is what's gonna be sent there next turn, which means we have a lot more. Now, if we go back into the current points, you'll see that we've got like 300, and 442. If we go back into the um, into the preview points for next turn, we've now got a lot more coming down this other this other road. Now we really want to be not splitting it up from here either. Like you can see there that we end up we want to be having most of what we have coming this, this other side. So we don't really need to be going down this road. We need to be more going this way and then splitting it all up. So let's go into this pull point. I'll still allow pull points to be, to, to over, override this one, but let's block that one off. And then we just go back in and just click, click on back. And so now we have most of the points going back down this way. And we don't need this one going splitting this way and going back up that way either. So we can go back to this way, just allow the pull point. I wish that this was default to have pull points off. But essentially it means that we're not going to have much going up this way at all. And so now we've got like next turn, we're going to have a lot of, um, lot of logistics running everywhere. But that's actually not the problem we have. Uh, the problem we have is that we just don't have the fuel. But that's um, but this one this would then be how we sort of can manipulate the amount of the flow of the traffic to make it work better for us. Um, so we've got too many roads essentially is what's going on in this in this instance uh, around the place. So we just we're just cleaning them up by allowing the pull points. The pull points we see here with the uh, with the green is the uh, is the units. So there's units that are pulling. Uh, logistics from there. If we go back into used points, we'll then sort of see that there's um, there's they're, they're pulling up into these different locations with the, with what they require for their um, uh, for their food. They're bringing they're, they're basically sending food out into these into these low level locations. If we start to move any further up, we're going to run out of, lo of logistics because of, we've turned on the color. The show the operational logistics. It just shows us where things start to struggle. Now food will always get through, but often fuel won't. But in this case, we've got greens everywhere, so we are we don't have any problem here at all. If we have a look at the, um, if we just go back and just go back to current points again, and I'll just go back to my standard um, modes, just go to inspect or move. Move is what I tend to have on by default. If we have a look at the, um, uh, at what's happening in through here and go to the fourth motorized with with this selected we can see what actually has come into the actual into this one here and so in this case we've actually got fuel um, it received six but requested 17 everything else is fine and it still has a lot of stocks of fuel 
So the supplies of fuel are, are like it's, 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 its stocks are good, but it's actual it, what it what it asked for just didn't come through. And so this was a low amount of fuel from what it requested because it ran out of fuel back at the capital. But there's certainly that the the truck network was certainly able to um, to deliver fuel if it was there. So one of the things we probably want to be getting is this lo this location here is a fuel location, and so I think we'll start to build in here. Um, so if we just go across and you, you can build the road yourself. If you don't build the road, the game will just do it for you. I might just build it from that location rather than from here. So I'm just going to go into the road building, just a dirt road. Oops, hang on. Just right click. And then we'll just go back to M for movement mode again. And if we then just go back into, uh, into building mode. So if we just go back into um, uh, construct, so with that with that place there selected, it does actually have a little uh, little symbol. So if we go back and just construct, we can build a um, oil drilling facility, which is going to cost me. I'm getting a little bit of metal from the scavenging. I now have a now have a almost enough. Uh, is it going to be enough? It's going to be just enough for us to be able to then build this oil drilling facility. So we're then going to get 500, but then we've still got the energy requirement, which is going to be a bit of a problem as well. But it will then sort out the um, the the uh, what we, the problem we have here with the fuel. So let's just start the construction. Unfortunately, we don't have any metals. We we don't we do need to find where we can get metals from. Order received. All right, so we'll go that way. Uh, we've got no other real shortages other than fuel. Uh, I won't buy the fuel. Energy is now going backwards. So if you can see there, we've got a, a drain on on our energy. We will have to get on top of this one fairly soon. So hopefully the um, the uh, Economic Council will then sort of figure th those things out. Um, let's just go and end our turn in here. So we've got a contact MTH card, recruit a mercenary card, uh, since by now this one should be at the end of that um, that third group. Polyval Confederation demands resolution of, of relations. Uh, they're upset about the continued unclear relations between us. Um, demands that we show our colours. And so in this case, uh, we'll be enemies. So we're going to essentially declare war here, with the fist profile then going up. Um, let's resign to our choice. So fifth profile goes up. Now that should then give us the fifth column as well. So now the border will then change. So we've now got a, a different change in through here. Uh, we do actually have another militia force that's now sort of also come through. I'll just go into the, that location. That should have um, triggered. We now we should now be in a, in a state of war. Yep, so war there. Maybe it must be next turn that we then end up getting the um, the fifth column. All right. Well, uh, this one can then just go through and um, just go onto the heights. I'll leave it there for one more turn, I think. Now we're not. We didn't move this turn, so there's a chance for the fuels to uh, catch up um, into here if we go back in. It's still only got five of twelve, but it's the stocks now sort of getting back up there again. Um, we'll leave this one where it is. Now this is a, a grassy plains location, so it's an easy one for us to attack. So we can actually do the attack fairly well in there. We just don't have very strong units to actually do the attack. One thing I'd love would be armored cars, but we just don't have the metals. So the metal is going to be a problem for us until we locate some. Now this is one of these situations where I don't really want to be going too far away. I can sort of afford to stay one turn away from things sort of happening. Let's just stay back. That's a good front line for us. 
All right. Well, um, let's have a look and see what happened with those with those um, strat cards now in the profiles. Oh, here we go. Okay, so this is the red and green that you're then talking about. So um, your nation does have this this uh, regime feat. You have a nine percent chance of return to gain it. It's been the highest profile f in four rounds. Um, your diplomatic uh, services are of the highest caliber. So diplomacy rolls are plus thirty. So we don't really need meritocracy in this instance. Although get, recruiting the talent would be good. So this is starting to kick in. I didn't realize this actually. This is the, that this is the way it worked. So um, your nation does not have this regime feat. You still have zero percent chance of return to gain it because the profile has only um, been the highest profile for zero rounds. There we are. Well, I didn't know that. So thanks for um, persisting with me <laughs> to uh, educate me on that. Uh, I had no idea that that actually handled it this way. It's funny because I'd spoken to Battle Mode about it. We've been we talked a bit about Shadow Empire and a few other different sorts of games, and and he he was surprised I don't look at the profiles very much. Uh, because he finds them very, very valuable. And um, yeah, it's, it's actually, there's a lot of nuance to it with what they've actually done. So you really do want to specialize. That's interesting. That is interesting. Hmm, okay. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, well, I'm guessing with the talent, we do want to, st we'd want to stick in with this then. So this is actually for us is really quite important. And um, enforcement, we probably want to go, what have we got there with, it's fun in this case here the 40 percent private private economy bonus is actually more important to us than nearly anything although we do get a tax bonus there of plus 50 percent with enforcement so um if we have a look back at our reports income tax 20 percent if we have a look at the um Cash, the cash flow. We should be getting a little bit of a bonus in through there as well. Yeah, that should be coming in there, I would have thought. Anyway, it's, we're only going down a very, very small amount at this, at this point in time. So we'll uh, look at that one in, in, in a little while. Me and myself and I was saying, actually, you want to rotate a bit uh, in the beginning uh, because there's some nice cheap bonuses in there. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's interesting. I didn't realise that. I thought we got all of them. So thank you for uh, for going through that with, with me. Must have been very frustrating while I was just not understanding what was being said. <laughs> okay, she was saying you can get a bunch of recruit talent cards early on. It's really great, yeah. I think we'll be wanting those. We'll be, we'll be needing them uh, as we move forward, actually. So that's definitely where we want to be. We can see because we're now building here, we've got things going back down. Even our industrial points are going backwards as well. Energy is going to become more and more of a, more of a problem. If we go back to the reports again and just go back into um, Empire Dashboard, um, the... Um, Yeah, bureaucratic points in through there. We've got uh, discovery investments at 84 bureaucratic points at this point in time. So we, we're investing as many as we can really into that. You know, it probably would have been more important for me to actually get more bureaucratic points from in here. But the the, the um, minerals are just going to be really, really bad for us. Yeah, we're, that's going to be terrible, actually. We may have to uh, trade... Very expensive. Yeah, fully stocked of high tech parts, even. Hmm, okay. Well, um, let's leave it. Uh, we, we do have war in here. I just want these guys to. Um, I mean, the, the readiness is high. That one's only at 74. That's 100. That's 100. This is going to be a, a difficult attack because there's just so many of them in here. And you can sort of see what they've got. So they've got a defense of uh, against soft attacks of 33, which is sort of d double, like, like if we have a look at our attack, the GIs. 
she got an attack of 39, which is not bad. And the machine gunners have got a 46 because they're of their high quality. Anyway, we'll leave it one more turn, then we'll go we'll go for it. Trade House has arrived. You kept the, your promise. Go to war with Polyvale Confederation. That's good. We gain volunteerism. New stratagems. Yeah, where's their fifth column? There, there they are. And so these have now sort of started off at the back. Now, again, I don't want to encroach into that. Another location up there. Just need to get our, our supplies running through first. So we've got another small location there as well. So we've got a few different locations we can start to um, to manoeuvre between. All right, let's um, let's start the attack now. We've got um, we've just got basic infantry in through here, the GIs uh, surrounding it. Now, what we want to do with this is um, the combat again. Like we don't have we don't have any water that we're, we're travelling across. If we go back into this location, have a look. We've got grassy plains. So the zone name is Polyvale. Um, it's uh, it's got a dome city, uh, city dome uh, level three at the stage, so it's a fairly big city actually. It's does the river is present. There's a small river on this to the southeast, which isn't going to affect our attack. We've um, we're not attacking across that river. Uh, dirt roads won't really affect anything as well, other than just movement. You know the ability to be able to move into the different locations. Um, now the minimum recon is 40, max, uh, minimum recon for full unit information is 400. If you have a look at the location through here, we have recon of 153. So we have good information already with what's going on. We don't actually have any artillery, we don't have any aircraft. So it's just gonna be a full on ground assault essentially against these guys. And uh, we wanna push them out of the city. That's why we leave one space for them to be able to retreat into. Just go back into here again. So, um, yeah, we've got um, now the maritime, yeah, uh, there's no logistics points. We don't have to worry about that one through there. It's then got the troop type. So there's no, there's no actual, um, there's no attack modifiers or defense modifiers by the actual, uh, the, by the grassy plains, but they can entrench up to 75. So they, they can, they have a fairly good entrenchment. The river crossing we see through there is negative 15. So if we were attacking across this location, we'd have a negative 15 to the attack. Uh, again, just with that, um, with what it's showing through there, uh, guns would be negative twenty-five, and and uh, tanks would be negative twenty percent across the uh, across that little river. So being aware of the river crossings is quite important. Uh, movement cost isn't going to really worry us at, at all. Uh, everything is looking pretty good. I think we'll we'll try to bounce them out with the with these first, the uh, just the GIs, and then we'll try the second round with the others. We don't have we don't, we've got one that didn't quite make it into the into the attack. But we'll uh, leave it there, for, like in, in this instance. Now, when we attack, I'll so just go through how this little scene works. When we start, first start to go in, there's a lot that's going on with this, and even just with the one of them there, it's saying it's only one to two odds, which is not not too bad. And what we can see with this is we've got different abilities that then are, are being applied to it, and so it's got a an entrenchment modifier of 52%. Now, it said it could go up to 75, so I'm still thinking it's going to be higher than what we're seeing through there. Um, the readiness modifier, now these, are, these aren't quite ready from what we can tell, so they've actually their readiness is a bit lower than ours. We've actually been able to hold, get our readiness up. This is a full-on multiplier. This is uh, on attack values, that's on hit points. So again, I think it's... I think we're looking at three rose colored glasses here with both of these a little bit. Uh, the experience modifier, they're gonna get plus 22%. We're a little bit more experienced than what they are with 36%. Uh, we then actually have the maximum, um, maximum attack, so attack saturation modifier for attack values. This modifier turns negative if, you are coming, uh, if you're committing too much firepower on a too little uh, quantity of targets. So for confeds, it's minus 53%. In this case, the confeds are their are these little guys down the bottom through here. And so these have got a, there's too many of them 
defending this one location. They've, they've actually got too many of the one location. So they take a, an overall modifier of saturation. But as we start to open up more attacks for, for us, that will then come backwards. You'll see that it's incredible the amount of detail and information that's actually in here. That then gives us a community. Once we add all of these things up, we've got a community modifier of negative 32%. Uh, their, their overall defensive power is 2,310 when you calculate all of these together. And then you apply the 32, you end up with a, a defensive power, or estimated defensive power of 1,570 back in through here. Now the next one uh, that we see over from our side is that we have our readiness is not quite 100% uh, back in through there. Uh, the experience is, is good though. This, is, this applies to both attack values and hit points. We also have estimated uh, advantages coming from our leadership, both the Supreme Headquarters and also the direct leader uh, coming back in, which gives us a plus nearly a plus a hundred percent essentially with the attack. Um, we have a the offensive power is only four hundred, but when you have plus a hundred percent, it's nearly eight hundred that's going to be coming back in. So it's eight hundred versus fifteen hundred, which gives about a one to two. Now, if I go and add in like like for example, we've got this one selected. If I go and, and add this one in here and click on that one through there, you can see it actually went backwards a little bit. And the reason is like it's now uh, one to 2.3 with the odds. And so we end up with a few extra little things happening in here. We get an extra 10% because of concentric modifiers because we're attacking from a different, a different direction. They then no longer have, they're now defending on two fronts. And so having so many people in one location is now coming backwards a little bit. So in this case, the, um, they're spreading out nicely along the front that, of where the attack's going to come back through. And so we end up with a, um, with a modifier now of only plus 38% in coming back in through here. Again, if I get rid of that one there, uh, we've got the 99%. Uh, we, and if we take that one back in again, um, you can see there, actually, it's the readiness. This one here wasn't, was the readiness was down, which has actually been a big impact. If I go to the one next to it, the readiness is also back, back, back bad there as well. So if I grab both of those, you can see that the concentric is now going up to plus 40%. The readiness is actually now pretty good. They're only, the, the, this, this thing where they're now spread out across three is actually not too bad. And it's now 0.8 to one. So we're getting closer and closer to getting good, uh, good uh, results. But we want to rely on the consent. The reason I actually split all these forces around here is to get the concentric modifier. And so if I get rid of both of those, for example, and go to the one that's opposite, I get plus 40 there. It's the same as if I'm actually applying two of them on either side. So I get plus 40 with the two on either side. I get plus 40 by coming in from the opposite, opposite direction. And so by having so many with the concentrics, we're going to end up with a, a better a better odds, essentially. So if I go and grab that one and that one, we're now getting a slight advantage. Now, ideally, what I'd love to see is a 6 to 1 or an 8 to 1, but I don't think we're not going to get it. So we're going to have to just go with a bit of attrition here. And so in this case, we've got 100% concentric modifier. Grab that one, it's 150%. So we've still got the 1.8. They're, they're slightly... Like they're coming, they're they're defending from all regions. This no longer really applies all that much. Um, yeah, they've, this overall has has now gone up to two thousand defensive power against nine thousand coming through here. So we've got we've got we should do okay. Now what we want to have happen is we want them to lose morale so that they run. Now if we had have taken this spot here where they couldn't run into it, if that was cut off, they wouldn't run away. And so what they would do is they would, they would stay and fight, and so the morale doesn't kick in as much. And so by doing this, we end up using, we're going to hope that they get their morale coming back through. Um, and so we're not using these. Now, if I start to use these in the fight, it shouldn't change this one all that much. See how it's still 1.8? The difference with this is we end up with a, uh, with a negative modifier. So this one is, um, the, uh, this modifier turns negative if you're coming from too much firepower Actually, it's not that one there. Where's the one that's... Yeah, actually, the concentric. This concentric went from 150 down to 75. And so the reason for that is we end up with... Um, when we use units from a different group, um, with it's then a logistical problem where they then can't quite um, attack at the same time. So I'm better off not doing that. I'm better off going with two separate attacks. 
uh, with the other four after if this one fails. So let's go and do the attack and just sort of see what actually happens here. So there's um, start the actual attack. Now we may win this one. We are losing a few units. They're starting to run. Actually, mission successful. We did it. What we did what we had to do. And so what actually ended up happening through there was round after round of different attacks going in. So I might even just explain how this one works as well. Um, you don't have to know it, but what we were looking for there is we were seeing different things happening where there was a lot of lines. That means that they were in the process of retreating. Once they all retreat, you can see how many actually retreated here. Um, the vast majority, in fact, all of this blue here is... Um, the Defender had 61 subunits that are retreating or, or have retreated. So 61 units, because we left that little open gap, didn't have to be killed. They didn't have to be fought to the last man. And so they we still killed a lot. We They lost 19 of their units, so these were all sort of killed. We lost a few as well. Like you can see that we lost different sorts of soldiers in through here. And so we ended up with... Um, the attacker lost uh, 10 subunits, so we actually ended up with 10 of our subunits got killed. Uh, we had some that retreated during the attack, but we still had 61 units that were left fighting. And so that one there is they've essentially all of their different groups. There was three pages there of some of them gave up and, and uh, surrendered. Um, and then page three back and through there as well. And we also had three pages of different attackers going in. Now... To see what's actually going on through here, uh, when you see the different numbers, like we can, we've got three, three this side, if we just go back to page one on this side as well, that means that there was uh, shots were fired uh, that that actually hit other units, like uh, enemy units, but the uh, red is then is actually that there were kills. And so when we see a red number through here, it means that there was, like this one had six, six shots that hit so this is, and I wish it would show you what the number is of the unit. Um, that's where it gets a bit, a bit frustrating. So in the fifth motorized light, this one didn't um, didn't run. It did six. It got six hits. If we wanted to see what its battle was, again, it, I wish it would give you the reference numbers. Um, there's nothing there, is there? But if we go back into this, is the actually battle report is different again. Oh, that's just the overall. Um, you know, view of what's going on, the units. Yeah, just giving you summaries of the different units of as to how they how they performed, the actual overall troops, what they did, uh, which is pretty cool. And um, modifiers, what sort of happened with the modifiers. But if we just go back across, and that's the defender and the attacker. If we just go back and look at the uh, at the at the text. The text then just gives us a same sort of summary. I haven't seen the battle report like that before. Graphic is what we're tending to be looking at. The detail then goes through round by round, unit by unit, and, and group by group. So if we have a look at round one, and it was the fifth motorized that we were then having a bit of a look at. Now, we can see through here that we had, um, we had um, some of them already were retreating in the first, in the first combat round. So this is the... Um, Round one, round two, still retreating. Now round nine, uh, that was a breakthrough for that one there. Round three, four, we can see that a lot of them are retreating. Some of the, One of them's dead at the bottom down through here, those GIs. The buses stay at the back, they don't sort of do much. That one's dead now as well. I think that this one here must be the, the one that actually did the, um, did the damage because it broke through... Look, it goes through how they were attacked, what the, um, uh, so attacks uh, the confeds and forces them to retreat. And so we actually have all of the actual statistics uh, as to what's going on. The first two rounds we fight at a lower, uh, lower odds. So if we have a look at the, um, we're attacking these guys. The first one, the attack startup is at negative 75 as we close the gap. <coughs> so 75 is, so we do a lot less damage there um, initially. And then, so you, often in the first round, your units will start to retreat and take damage. The second round as well is um, we attack this counter, counterfeit in through here. Then we have the attack startup is nearly 50%. So it goes from 75 to 50. By round three, uh, with this with this GI through here, um, we got attacked. We did we did counterattack. We then attack ourselves. In this case, we no longer have that negative. We're now fighting 
on the front line. Already the ninth have broken through, and so they've um, they've already with their with their hits they've actually been able to make make their way through. If you have a look at his attacks or attacks in through this other side, they did get they got a kill through that side that then got them to be able to break through the front line. So when we see the exclamation mark, so everything is models. Not that it really matters that much, uh, but the seventh, um, yeah. So. Like again, we we pinned one of the units. We've um, we've got a retreat happening with with uh, other ones as well. Actually, yeah. So actually, it's attacked by the confeds, which we are then pinned. Keep on going. We're still actually okay. So we're still attacking from this location. Got another kill through there. Um, attacks the confeds, force them to retreat. This is probably like an, an attack where again it would have been a, a, one of those white numbers. Uh, attacked. So it's, it goes on. We attack twice in through there, actually. Attacks the confeds. We've got another kill through there again as well. That would be one of the red numbers. Yeah, so anyway, it's just cool the way. And we've certainly broken through by this stage. And so um, we had a lot of units that retreated out of that group. Uh, two of them made it through. The 7th and 9th GIs uh, made it through into the, um, into the back area and sort of then finished off the attack. And so every single group has got the same sort of deal. Like there'll be a whole lot of them that have... Um, you know, broken through, uh, in through these different areas. So anyway, that's sort of uh, where they are. And then we've got the the um, the enemy as well. And then round by round, they will then be just doing different sorts of things as well. So it's um, yeah, it's cool the way it does work. Not that you really need to worry about that so much, but that's the um, certainly this little this this representation here is enough. Uh, but there is all that detail going on behind the scenes as well. Um, so. This is, but understanding how those numbers actually do kick in is a is a big is a big factor. So we have the negative one hundred fifty percent. This is a terrain modifier. So concentric attack is in through there. We end up with the one hundred fifty percent concentric, which certainly helps, uh, which we spoke about. Overall, the troop modifiers were just uh, plus fifteen percent. We did actually end up with the operational HQ. Uh, this is uh, Vance Robinson. This is that uh, character we looked at early, and he actually gave a lot of bonuses. Uh, the SHQ hardly anything. He's quite. He's not really all that good. But then he would have made a that would have made a massive difference into the actual fighting by having him actually participate like this. Just going to click on OK, and so we've now taken the city, and they've now retreated back out to here. And that doesn't matter because we can just basically now take the location and just be done with it. So um, they will then disappear next turn. We will then take all their territory, and that's the end of them. So um, so that's that has now been been uh, affected successfully or it's prosecuted the uh, the war. I might as well just go and take a bit more of the um, of the borders. Like I'm just trying to get. Uh, High like areas we, we we can protect fairly easily. Let's just move back down there. Storage cave. What does that one give us? Collector's cave. So um, a rare machine, uh, a collector of rare machinery set up a workshop in this reclusive cave. Machinery plus one. Wow, that is really really valuable. So um, definitely want to be getting that. Just move down. We don't see these until we sort of um, cover them. That's going to be very, very valuable to us. Now, I'm not at war with these. Just keep them sort of uh, back at bay. These are just rifle militia. Um, I'm sort of... I wouldn't mind getting this next, I think. Keep that one there for now. Decisions. Right, Maritime Trade House representative. It's going to cost me 200 credits, which I can do, actually. So do we accept? I'll go yes. Yes, sir. And we can upgrade the big town of Tarona to a minor city, which I think it's, it's usually good to do that with your capital. So in this case, yes, we will do it. That's 20 political points. We've got 85 now. Order received. That's good. And so that just allows us to get more growth and more population will then sort of be brought into the city itself. Let's move these across. 
Now we've actually run out a little bit of, um, if we just go back into these locations, we have a look at replacement troops. You can see there that we've uh, we've got we've lost ten of our infantry, so we need to go and get more GIs. I'll get say fifteen of those, and we'll get a couple of machine guns as well. Let's get five. You know, it's going to use up a little bit. Actually, we've now got this thing operational. Our energy will be going backwards even more uh, in the next turn. So if we have a bit of a look at this one through here. Um, now, again, I'll just go back to traffic signals. So I did actually, I didn't block that one off. So I want to block that one off, but allow the pull points to go through. Again, we want to be pushing everything down that, that other road. So um, this is where we want everything to go. And this, this road ultimately is going to be very, very important to us. Not so much this road here. Um, so I could block that road off and just allow, allow the logistics to then end up running all the way through towards uh, uh, Fieldstein. What's the name of that particular place in through there? These are still got green dots, so they're actually still getting their supply. Uh... Race formation, it would be useful to have an armoured car, but I just can't afford it with the uh, with the metals. A lack of metal is terrible. We should be finding some around the place. Yeah, it's just nothing, nothing at all. Yeah, so hopefully the uh, prospecting will uh, will work soon enough. And we'll get more. Uh, now, what else was there? there was something else I was going to do. There was this one in here. So the fuel will now start to come back up. So we will then be able to manage these trucks. The f the here yeah, it's this power is the biggest problem. And again, if we look at the the uh, what we've got through here, the technology, we haven't discovered anything yet. So we'll just end our turn there. Come on, give me some talent cards, please. Okay, we've got the new zone, we get another fate point. Okay, so we've got um, got GR ring mail, so a simple technique to reinforce low-tech armor, ingenious and easy to implement. That's three fa uh, that's three of these though. Um, I'm not sure how that one works. We've got a thousand credits, we've got the stock emission, so the MTH decides to issue more stock. Uh, militia loss of faith. Now we want to do this one later on, but not, not initially. We sort of want the militia to be coming through. We also picked up these as well, cultural interrogator. So to make them become more like us, we have to become a little bit more like them. Uh, we've got Labor Day. We've got a tactical genius, an autistic little man with that whispers um, brilliant tactical moves in the ears of commanders. Again, that's two. We do have the two. Chemical High, new doctor is in town, selling pills of many colours and with many pleasures. Want one, gain two FP. It can cause some issues. Pay the bonus. We're still not getting what we want. Problem soldier morale. Okay, so morale has gone down because of the poor food that we had. You can see there that, again struggling with the uh, with the oil initially, but this will then be okay if we go and have a look at these units. You can see it's only oil that's not getting through to these locations. So they've used up a lot of oil with their uh, with the attacks. Yeah, this one here. to spread out. These are farmers. They're unknown. Culture unknown out through that side as well. So they've all disappeared from here now. Um, let's move these ones down towards the front. this if we can. Yeah, 
so they're they're just struggling there for a little while. Just sort of spread spread out across here, get ready for the attacks. Put this militia in as a uh, as a garrison. There's no movement from these territories at the top. So they'll just take a little little bit of time just to get their readiness up as well. Their readiness will be quite low for a little while. But uh, the fuel will now start to flow, so we'll start to get more fuel coming back in. It is the metals, though, that's the problem. We've got hardly any metal income, so we really can't sort of rely too much on any of that for now. Let's have a quick look at our reports again. Yeah, discovery investment is high at uh, 161. If we have a look back at the um, at the tech, your yeah, discovery cost is 200, so we're getting closer to uh, hopefully getting what that one there. That one's also going to be 200. This will all be 200 discovery. We might have a quick look at and see what we can build in the, in the city. And if we go to government, the high command level two will then give us uh, 40 uh, bureaucratic points. If we go with the bureaucratic officers, we need 200. We've almost got enough to get the bureaucratic offices, which will then give us 50 bureaucratic points, extra bureaucratic points in through there. This is 400 metal required for that one, which is too much. Also, the energy requirements is way too much as well. You can see we've only got like a few turns left of energy coming in. How are we going with this? We've got maximum storage there of 5,000. We're still doing okay there. No one like there's too much water on the planet, so no one really cares about the uh, about the water storage. Yeah, we can store a lot of that as well. Ammunition is going down. That's okay though at this stage. Yeah, we know we need to do a bit more. Well, this is where we still have good enough logistics because we're not really relying on tanks or anything at this stage. So we'll just keep that one where that is. But the um, it's the the machines. We've only got two machines, but this will be a this will be awesome having this having the storage cave. We can sort of find more machines every turn. Now the policy speech. So um, goal is that our mining assets reach at least two levels. Uh, goal is that percentage of soldiers in your subject reach at least twenty three percent. Industrial assets reach at least two levels as well with enforcement. Now they're both enforcement. There's a fist. At the moment, we've got commerce. That will then boost this one up. Oh, there we go. That does turn to green. Uh, All oh, right, yeah, two rounds there. Okay. Um, all right, so we've got this one still operating. 9% um, chance to gain it. Does it matter? Does it matter? Three market. I'm trying to figure out which one we want to go with. Well, we're nearly at 60 here. You get a combat bonus of plus twenty five percent with uh, with that sixty percent um, fist. Percentage of soldiers of your subject streets at least twenty three percent. We don't need to do that. Um, the mining assets is what I really would want. I think I'm going to go that way. And oh, damn, is is it really? I mean, we're still we're still okay here. This is the important one for us. Let's go that way. 
That's what we want to focus on. Charismatic Union Chief in Tirona. So uh, leave the Chief and Compatriots their beers. Ask the Chief to help reduce unrest. We don't really have any unrest, not to speak of. Get rid of the agitator. Again, difficult, difficult role for us. Order received. New Governor for Polyvale. So we have um, we have our Cap 2 guy who, yeah, I'm thinking I, I, I could just grab the, I could, it won't matter that much, but if we go back to the strat cards, back to Nation, Have a look and see what we ended up with. Ellen Green Knight. Cap 3. Very high intelligence. Seventeen years old as well. Wow. Okay. Well, she really has to be put into um, into one of the economic one of the one of the councils. Probably the military council, I think. We'll use her there. Okay, so I'm happy with I'm happy with cap threes at this stage, <laughs> which is sort of weird. Um, normally, you you're really just holding out for cap fours and fives for these for those like uh, lucrative jobs, but that's pretty much all we're going to be able to do, I think. I could grab another junior. Let's just go and do it. Oh, here we go. Cap four. Finally got one. High intelligence, high war skills. Twenty-two year old. Okay, we've got two. We've got two good uh, people here. Two very good people. Now, this would be and very high covert ops here. Very high. But this thing applies back to high command. I mean, it would. Be, I'm sort of thinking: do we, do we bite the bullet and get rid of Aiden now? Deal with the damage that that causes. You see, he's in charge. He's like you can see a little star next to his next to his symbol. He's the actual faction leader of the Merchant League. And if we have a look at the, um, if we just go back out to the map, Steel Keep. Merchant League is it's fifty fifty, but I think Merchant League would probably be the um, yeah. So it would be pissing them off, everyone involved in them. But if we're going to get, if we don't want him for the length of for, you know for the long haul. We could we could, we could uh, yeah remove him. Yeah, if we leave, um, if we do put him in charge of the city, the new city, Aiden, Aiden's just not going to learn. He's got 78 experience. If you look at some of the others, if you forgot to put the advisor, the advisor I meant to. Um, Call and attach to the um, director of the Economic Council yes, sir, just to help out in that regard. So he should have been attached there a while back, just to give get more points, more uh, more things happening. Uh, the secretary doesn't matter that much, but the uh, also the Supreme Command Council is also terrible. The um, Economic Council. Oh, you're right, you're only getting eight coming in, but the experience is much higher overall. Um, yeah, she's got high experience there, that's a starting point. Uh, yeah, go back up to the top one again. You know, I think we ditch him. Standing by for Roger that. Yeah, it's not it's not that expensive for us at this stage. 
So firing leader with very high seniority ranking will have the uh, following consequences. Same faction members will suffer minus 25% of their faction relations with you. Other leaders will suffer minus 9%. If you make a promise for another or better job, this effect on other leaders will be halved. So let's have a quick look and see what happens there. If we, um, so it's only, the, it's only this one here, the reserve pool member is the only other part of his, of his government. And Vance Robinson is also somebody that could fill that role. It's such an important role. But then so is the Supreme Command Council. Well, what we could do is remove him and remove him. Do we want Sloan to go straight in? Yeah, the war skills are very high, extremely high. So I think we'll put Sloan in as the, um, as the new Supreme Commander, like the commander of the first SHQ. Um, Yeah, we need someone better in here as well. I think we'll I think we'll bite the bullet, and he's in charge of the other group as well. There's um, actually there's another faction there, armed front faction leader. Oh, he's only a member. Only a member. All right. Well, let's uh, let's remove uh, Arden. We'll give you another job. There's no better job than what he had. Roger that. Yeah, so we've got... Um, so he's, his relation has gone down. Arden has gone down as well. Actually, he's now... Looks like he's actually... Um, he says he's still faction leader there. I don't know what's happened with the colours with that one through that side. Now we'll have to wait for next turn before anything actually happens in that regard. Do we get rid of Van, uh, do we get rid of of Diesel now? Because again, this is a, such a critical role for such a long period of time. Um, yeah, I think we'll do it. Let's go and uh, let's go and ditch them right now. We've only got fifty three. Yeah, that will still be okay. We'll call we'll call him up. Try to find other jobs for them. <laughs> so we're getting rid of. Uh, we're going to have a lot of a lot of problems, a lot of potential problems in through here. So um, that will do us for there. Though this is often you don't want to do this sort of stuff, but it's um, in this case we'll see how we see what actually happens in through this other side. We won't we won't get any more people in. Uh, got one more decision to make. New new governor. So um, damn it, he is. Um, I can put Aiden in there. That gives him his other jo other job. He's going to be pretty shitty no matter where he ends up going. He's got better he's got better skill sets. Let's dismiss this one for another two. We want Diesel. So Diesel was the one that we just got got rid of that role. Yep, so that caused even more problems. Uh, I, I want these for other things. Good morning. There he is. A point. Roger that. Okay, so positive effect on relations with other leaders due to seniority of appointment plus twenty one percent. You'll be a good governor. Yes, I hope so. He'll he'll be okay in that role. It's only a minor city, but that's um, that's what he'll he'll do. So he does have, even though he's low, he's got low capability. He's um, he does have skill sets in that regard. All right, let's uh, now that the wars are over, let's just um, do a complete reshuffle, cabinet reshuffle. That meritocracy is something to pay off. It is indeed, actually. It is indeed. Yeah, that's why I have to make to-do lists every turn. It, it's it's like that, isn't it? I wish there was a little notepad that the game, 
the game came with. Uh, oh, we've got a 10 Gia Romulus. It, there's like a tank. There's tanks there that we picked up in, uh, in Polyvale. So uh, advice, metal production. Yeah, we know that that's a problem. We know, we know, we know. Just dismiss that one. Um, you need to build a mine somewhere if we can find one. Okay, so um, the decisions that we actually have, new director of the Supreme Command Council. Now we were going to use... Sloan was going to be... Hang on, hang on, hang on. What's happened with, with the first SHQ? Don't tell me he's gone straight back in. No, no, he's still there. Oh, unit decisions. Here we go. New commander for the first SHQ. So we want Sloan in that role, not um, not Aiden. So sh she is now going to replace Sloan. She's the cap four. So she goes into that role. Roger. All right. So she's not aligned with any particular party. The director for the Supreme Command Council. Damn, who are we going to use there? We had Ingmar. We don't want him. I think we're going to use her there initially. Good morning. There we are. Okay, the orders uh, for the governor of Polyvale. So Diesel is now... Um, we want to just set up so we can end up with getting, say, five recruits per turn. Um, the sign-on bonus will be five. We we're not going to get them initially. Worker salary, I think, is five usually as well. I think that's how... Was it two? I can't remember what the average is. Might just um, come back to that one. We'll just have a quick look inside here. Standing by. Order received. Five and then fifteen for the recruits and five hundred. Okay, we'll confirm the orders. We've got um, we've got a fair few recruits coming in anyway, but um, just Order confirm received. those orders. And um, Polyvale. Just make it the same. We could say three. Now, emergency food. Um, keep it as unincorporated until it becomes friendly. I think that that will still be okay. Um, I should I should check. Like the, they'll have a uh, they'll have their own food supply, so that will be fine. So we'll just go and um, confirm those orders. Okay, now we've got a group there. Nope, that's nothing. That's fine. Now we've got the fuel starting to sort of op operate a little bit further afield now, which is good. Territory. I want to find out what these are. Back onto the roads. Now these tanks are very, very powerful. These GR Romulus tanks. These are um, these are uh, heavy tanks. They do a hell of a lot of damage, but um, essentially they're, they're much better against armor, um, extremely high numbers. But we don't want to be wasting them at all, so I'm just going to keep them back. I don't really want to be focused on them, so I'll just leave them back back there for now. I don't want to be even risking them even slightly. Just keep them off there.
Yeah, so we hopefully we can see what this is at some at some stage. So we know what we're up against up in up in the top there. Just keep on those roads. They're trying to encroach in around. Uh, what have we got in through here? This is Queen's Fort. We still don't know what they actually are. They're just rifle militia that we're seeing through that, that side as well. Uh, we might build another army group for the south. Now we've got 184 in through this other side if we just go to raise formation. So we want to grab a, uh, with an OHQ, is what we do want to have. We only want to get a brigade, which would, again, by default, start off on brigade. Now we've got the infantry. We can get 33%, which means we can't actually build it. And the reasoning is, is that we do have enough there. We don't have enough people. The troops are okay. It's the logistics. So the logistics require uh, 495. And if we just press number one, it means we have to build it inside the city. Yeah, we can build that one at sixty-nine percent based on the uh, on the people. Now we've got the infantry and the machine guns, which is um, ultimately probably going to be better for us. Hang on, having said that, before I do that one, I do need to be building that government building, the bureaucratic office, we've now got enough metal for that one. So let's go and build that one. Order received. We need to keep on investing. Just press number one. So it makes it hard for them to, to cut through gaps. The spa through here is only going to give us um, one political point per turn, which is hardly anything. But this through here, getting the extra machine is actually worth quite a bit, ultimately. Um, so, uh, so Mark's saying it looks like you just started. Um, me, myself and I saying started six hours ago. <laughs> three hours ago, three hours ago. Uh, but yes, it, it's, it's always slow at the start. It's, it's, um, but we're sort of doing okay. Again, I'm just looking at the green lines to sort of make sure that we're not stretching out too far. Beyond, beyond our supplies. Uh, we could start to turn off some of the supplies, for example, down this way. Like if we wanted to keep everything moving along this other side. <clears throat> so I think I might do that. I'm gonna just go back to traffic signals. And again, I'll allow pull points through so that I'm not gonna, not gonna be touching those at all. Let's only have say 80% of, uh, of the materials go down that way. Just go that way and same in through here as well. Allow any pull points, but still only have 80% of the leftovers, which then just keeps everything going along that one road. And so if we now have a look at the uh, at the uh, preview points, we've only got a small, small number now coming back down along this other side. And then we've got a lot more heading out towards this other location. All right, just keep the current points on. Everything else is okay there, I think. There's something in there. That's what we needed to do. All right, so we've been able to now reshuffle our cabinet, um, which then should start to we should start to have a, a more positive impact on everything coming up. Ah, here we go. We found metal deposits in Polyvale. And Rasala Territory has violated a border and declared war on us. So this is one of the territories in the north. It's got a new text, sealed roads. Now these discoveries, this is actually one of these critical things where we don't care about sealed roads at all. So we're looking for um, solar panels. So we don't, we don't uh, start researching this. 
um, that was a waste of um, of you know research essentially. Got a problem with low supply. We've dismissed that one. There it is. There. Okay, so we'll build a road. And this is critical. Here we've got enough of everything. It does require machines, which is fine. Roger that. Now our we've got two turns left of energy. So we need to sort of uh, keep keep tabs on that one. Now, the up through here, they've declared war, but we don't know anything at all, all, at all about Rasala territory. Uh, that was not the group that had... Oh, yes, it was the group. This is all Rasala territory back up and through here. Now, we don't need to worry too much about that one. This one, we have to just make sure that we come back out into our, into our location. I'll just stay on the hills. So there was something in here. We don't know what it was. We'll have to wait for an attack to go in before we can sort of do much. We do have another m militia force. I might send them up for now. And there's not much else we can do there at this stage. Now what are these guys? These are the um, these are guardians. Oh, they've got sentinels, assassin droids. Oh, this is one of these special groups. These are guardians. So these are Wernus Lands uh, Protectorate, I think. So these are these are high level, <laughs> high level units. Yeah, these got androids and stuff. They, the actual soldiers themselves don't fight that much, but there's a lot of them. So what I think we'll do is I think we'll we'll leave them to their own devices. We'll, we'll start to we won't be nasty with them at all. We don't know what we're dealing with with the others. That means we can just take on these farmers, Piconia packs. We don't know what this culture is just yet. Land. This is Savannah is, doesn't really allow you to dig in that much, only 125 maximum entrenchment. So it's not ideal. Actually, I should have kept these back this way. Just to protect along that front line just in case they get aggressive. Uh, four decisions, national budget allocations, I'll keep them where they are. Org decisions, new organization. Um In actual fact, we don't really need the, anything at this point in time. I'm going to go none because I really need to be pushing. I need to. I need to get the the energy under control first. Economic council research objective. So this is where usually what you think. Oh, okay, sealed roads. Okay, let's. That's the only target we've got. Let's do it. The other target we have is no target, and this is what we want to keep on doing until we until we actually discover it. So just to go back into the management screen through there with the technologies, we've now discovered sealed roads. We haven't actually uh, researched it yet, but we've discovered it. We need solar energy. That's fairly critical. Now we can build other things to get our energy needs. Um, Polyvale, we could actually certainly create like a um, something to chop down the forests and... Um, and Polyvale, Polyvale has forests nearby, but um, Tirana doesn't. So if we went into construction through here, we've got organic furnaces, we, which we could build if we had to. Yeah, we're getting very close now. 
but we'll see we'll see what we can do hopefully hopefully they'll be able to discover what they need to fairly soon national budget I'll just go no changes there at this stage demagogue so we have uh, find and arrest the demagogue um, it's gonna be too hard it's a population it's a fraud yeah um, he gets happier but then the unrest is going to go up by crazy amounts if we do this. But we can afford to have that happen. So let's just do this one. Yeah, it's critical failure. Uh, unrest went up by 40%. So, um, yeah, we can expect to see um, there'll be rebellions in that location fairly soon. So we'll have to uh, sort of monitor what happens. But we're heading back this way anyway. We're sort of, we're all on top of the, this is actually where our main armed forces happen to be right at this, this point in time. All oh, eight machinery have been secured. for any outbreaks, which is none, that's good. Okay, no reports, uh, no, nothing we have to do this turn. Let's have a quick look at the reports in through here. Yes, we need this discovery to go up to 200 again. So we're getting a lot of bureaucratic points coming back in here now. And um, that will be important. We're now at the maximum with our water. Uh, the, we're down to, um, basically, we're going to run out of energy this turn. So let's go to our assets and just start to manage them. We've got them in two different locations. We've got a um, metal mine under construction, which will keep that one going. We can't affect these at all. Uh, so just Tirona. Let's make that go down to say 25% production. The oil drill, uh, let's make that 25% as well. So that will then save a lot of our energy. Preview. You're only producing 30. Yeah, so we do actually have a bit of a need, ultimately. We could turn this one off completely and just um, mothball it. But I think I'll just keep it dribbling along. Actually, if I mothball it there, yeah, energy starts to go back up. That should be okay, I think. Let's just see how we go next turn. some more movement up that other side just keep this this group in where that is that's actually okay um, oh they're coming back down here now they're 
a bit more aggressive. Yeah, there's something moving across. We don't want to lose this. Just keep these militia back up in here. Okay, whatever was in that mountain is now gone. Yeah, we do need to keep on doing working on this. That. Accept that motion. This is now going up slight amount by six now that we've sort of fixed up the other one. Minor worker strike in Polyvale. Uh, I'm just going to pay them off with democracy, I think. Um, we need to try to keep the meritocracy going, but we don't. Um, it's going to go to 47. It's still going to be behind what we have, so that's actually not too bad. Roger that. Okay. Barracks again. We don't want that yet either. Would be useful, but we definitely need the um, need the um, the other one. Okay, fuel is now going backwards, but we'll just get into position, and then we'll, we'll be okay. Traffic signal now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Every, every security in our zones reach at least seven points. Hmm, that's not going to be. I'm going to refuse this one. Yeah, offering to buy IP. Now, this is actually a good way for us to make money. Uh, but the industrial points, we actually do need it. So I'm going to go no. Order received. Now, our metals is now going up fairly well as well. Because of that metal mine. So back in here, let's just go back in and go to construction. high command building. We can now afford it, except for the energy. The energy is a problem. Um, it's a big problem, actually. Get the scav furnace which we can pick up there. Um, we might do this one just to boost this up. We're then going to run through the scavenger areas. If we just exit out of that one for a second, have a bit of a look at the two energy, the two energy things we can do. Tarona is a ruins, and um, it's a ruins with uh, still, where's it got? It's got uh, 8.8 thousand um, scav points left in it. Now it's the only ruins that we have that are close by, so it's the only source of you know, general sort of uh, stuff that we can then locate. Polyvale does actually have some forests in around it, like right next to it. And it will then chew up the forest very quickly and then try to extend out even further, I think. But that may be too far away. If we look at Polyvale and go to Construct, their energy requirements is the organic furnace. If we just have a look and see what this one says. So... Um, this one here is the um, level one, so the uh, yeah, each city level supports one asset levels. Um, yeah, user facilities on hexes that are in range of forests. Forests can be cut down and cut to furnaces to generate energy. 
uh, range equals level. So the range, so the level one, it's going to be too expensive for us to move across. So we've only got one forest that we could then make use of, which is not going to let it go for, for very long. So I think we're better off getting the scav furnace rather than the uh, rather than the organic furnace. That, that will then end up, it'll destroy that forest there. Um, you've got no real choice. So I think we'll just go back to Tirona. Let's go to construct energy and we do we'll we will be needing this one. Order received. Uh, assuming myself and I are saying actually I don't like the changes to energy generation. Works okay if you start with two zones and high tech, but uh, you have a big chance to be ducked in in, in the city state with low tech start. Yeah, which is sort of yeah we're in we're in a bit of trouble uh, at this point in time. But again, I guess each game does have its own it presents problems that you have to solve. So in in this in our case it's the energy energy crisis that we actually have. Let's have a look again at our assets. The Agrodome. If we mothball that, I need to keep this thing going. We still have a fairly big stock of food. So once we get the scav furnace running in Torona, we'll then be able to turn, turn other things back on again. We'll hopefully find solar panels fairly soon. Okay, so if this front line is is secure. That's okay. These guys haven't encroached back down any further. Uh, two decisions to make. So arm front reminds you you hire their candidate. We'll accept this. This is from good old Diesel, their cap one, <laughs> and demagogue in Polyvale. So find the demagogue and arrest him. It's too difficult. Two D one hundred. So average one hundred and four basically is what it's saying. Meritocracy goes up by plus five. I think I'm just going to say convince the population. Now this is another failure. It's gone up again. Now this is this is definitely going to be leading to other problems here in Polyvale. Yeah, the rebel the, the rebel unit that's our rebel unit, but Polyvale itself, um, sixty four unrest. Very, very high. We may have to try to get some other troops fairly soon. Good flow coming down into here. Let's uh, let's go and build another group of, of infantry in this location. So OHQ Brigade and we can grab one of these. It's the logistics that's the problem, but that won't really matter that much. We're not going to use SHQ troops. Uh, I can if I wanted to, but um, we don't really need to at this stage, I don't think. So let's go and add in one of these groups. We'll just raise the formation. And so that will be a, another, um, another infantry group that we then have available just to protect the uh, polyvale itself, which I'm pretty sure will end up with some issues. I might just move that one down to there. I'll keep them sort of where they are. Placement troops. It's okay. Right, right, right. So that nothing much else we can do there at this stage. Gotta re 
be on contract. I don't want to be spending any money at this stage. We're still in the um, in the early stages. Now, a non-aggression pact with uh, Field Spa would possibly be a good thing. That's going to then free up this front. We don't actually have a diplomatic officer or anything like this. Industrial points are a problem. We're actually now generating um, fairly well in through here. So we've got, um, we are going positively. Scout Furnace is now kicking in. Well, let's get the energy reserves up. Uh, what can we store? A thousand. So I'll just let them keep on storing up. We are going backwards a little bit with the food. Might just. Uh, change this one a little bit just to say 25% production there. That one's already on 25%. They're all okay. Well, there's no no um, no rebellion yet. I really thought there would be. It's coming down slight slightly. Supreme Command Council, I'll just keep them where they are, so no changes there. And okay, people are dying because of gas from a broken machine. I'm trying to minimize casualties. Can I count on your support? Yes, of course you can. Roger that. Success, there we go. And Picano Pax uh, demands resolution of relations. Now Canio packs, where are they? This is the one down this way. We've got this one here, which is fairly uh, Queen's Fort is farmers as well, actually. Piconio packs is also farmers. I think what we'll do is we'll swap the units over. We're probably not really strong enough to take them out at this stage. Oh, this is one of these things where it would be... We're going to have to become friendly with some, some of these, I think. Okay. Let's have a look at that before we do it. Unit decisions. New commander for the third machine gun. This is where we can use, actually there's poor old Aiden way back over there. We've got Hannibal Jabba, Cap 2, good war skills. He'd be okay. Look at this guy here, he's a political animal. Um, war skills not that great. I think we'll go with the ones that are friendly. Aiden, what are you? Yeah, he's our old Supreme Commander. So we'll, we'll appoint Hannibal. And Piconia Pax demands resolution. Wow, which way should we go here? If we have a look, and, let's have a look and see what we're up against. They're going to be in here, I would guess, with the ruins. Um, getting hold of those ruins would be quite useful. They've got forces that we could sur surround and destroy fairly quickly. I think we'll I think we'll declare war. <clears throat> then what we'll do is we'll move these down along that front. Two problems. They didn't have very much, but it was an ambush in the in the forest. We just didn't see it. I want to get on the other side of the um, of the creek.
So we'll just keep on spreading out across here. These haven't come down at all, which is fine. If you guys look at the time, I'm going to have to get going actually. So I hope, you, hope you've all had a really great Easter. Um, I didn't say that at the front actually. I should have should have started off by wishing everyone a happy Easter. Uh, but I've got uh, family things today, which I'm looking forward to. So um, yeah, my uh, my daughter's cooking a massive <laughs> Easter feast. <laughs> so um, yeah, get a foreign council and deploy them. So, yeah, that's um. I often have a house rule of not doing that. Because it's it's sort of a bit broken in the game. It's a bit too easy. Uh, but um, yeah, it wouldn't be bad. Actually, I might move this through. Let's start to push these back across these rivers. I can even get that one across to there. I do have the tank I can move in as well. They may try to cut this one off, but I don't think it's going to matter that much. So I've got one into that position. Anyway, I better get going, so I'll leave it there, guys. Um, I'll uh, catch you... I should be back again tomorrow, I think. I'm just trying to think about what I've got on tomorrow. Yeah, I think that should be okay. I've just got a funny feeling I've got something I'm supposed to be doing, but um, I can't remember. Anyway... Um, although I'll probably be on, back on Twitch, actually, so I'm not sure what I'll play on Twitch. I know that Distant Worlds has also had an update just recently as well, so I'm not sure what, what I'll play. I was going to play, actually. Um, actually, I've got... Uh, no, Chat Tactics coming the day after. Uh, I was going to be playing um, uh, so Songs of Conquest, which has had a massive map update this week. So there's heaps and heaps of maps there, and I had a, look, had a quick look at that one. I might just show you, if you, if you do have that game... Let's just go and save this one. YouTube 01, there we are. I'll save that one there. Um, but I'll, sh I'll just show you. I was really impressed with it, actually, when I saw it, because I haven't played it for a while. Uh, it's been nearly a year, actually, since I've actually played it. But Songs of Conquest is essentially the Heroes of Might and Magic um, killer like it's sort of it's one of those games that that um that's a lot lot better than heroes of might of magic ever was and uh it's just getting better and better and better they've got a lot of things on the uh on the boil as well uh the dev told me that there's um lots of random map stuff happening as well um yeah i so see eddie ball games saying thanks daz by the way vic has toughened up the ai per foreign relations oh okay well maybe it is worth trying to um see how that that works i sort of had a house rule for myself not to do it so this is this game is an amazing game. Um, so I just I thought I'd just mention it because um, like literally the uh, map pack has just come out. They're, they're heading towards version one point zero in a few months time. And um, but you've got this randomly generated maps conquest pack, and I, th I think this is such a cool way of doing it. The first time I saw this sort of applied was was the Heroes Hour, uh, which also had a similar sort of thing. But if you go to random maps, what they've done so well with this is that you've got. Uh, like it's just got like an algorithm that sets up like different homelands with choke points. So you're looking at the different choke point layouts for this one. So a randomly generated map for two players. Uh, you've got different ways of playing, beacons of power, find the objects. You can play with any combination of those different things. But then you've also got the algorithm change. So for two players, you've got quad, you've got corridor. Uh, so you're literally just going from end to end. Um, this one here, you've got like a few different ones. You've got flea, you've got uh, insect. Where you sort of come in from different sides, can go off into different areas as well. This looks so interesting. The way it sort of does work. Uh, six players. I also like they didn't bother with three players because this game, these games, have become so unbalanced with three players. So they just skip that over completely. I think there's still those in the in the thing. This is not new, by the way, but this is new for me. I just when I saw it, I thought, oh wow, this is really really cool. What they've actually done with these uh, with these algorithms, it's um, amazing actually. So, yeah, very, very impressive. Anyway, I thought I'd just show it because um, if you do have the game, it's been a long time since I've actually played it, and uh, I'm itching to play it. I was almost going to play it today, but then I saw that um, saw that Shadow Empire had uh, had an update. But I thought that uh, I'll definitely be wanting to cover that on uh, 
on this week's chat tactic, I think. Anyway, guys, I will uh, catch you around. I'll, as I say, I'll be on Twitch probably tomorrow just to even things out a little bit. And then chat tactic the day after that, I think. I can't remember what. I know I've got commitments this week, but I just can't think of what they actually are. Anyway, guys, I'll uh, catch you around. Thanks for watching.